weekend's action. The Temple Owls invade the stadium here in Newark, and when Temple and Delaware get together, Howard, no matter what the record, it's always a Donnybrook. Both teams always come into the game in 10, sometimes I think maybe two in 10. Uh, both teams having off years this year, certainly for Delaware, three and three. They're not used to being at 500 at this juncture of the season. And Temple at one and five, of course, when you're playing teams like uh, Pitt and Penn State and Georgia and West Virginia, it's no disgrace to be one and five. I think perhaps the key to this game might boil down to the kicking. And if it does, I think we've got to give Temple the edge. They've got a sophomore by the name of Kip Schenefeld, has punted the ball 44 times, and he's got a 44.8-yard average. And it's a legitimate average because his longest is only 59. So he's, he's a consistently good kicker. And uh, it looks like Delaware might, if they force uh, Temple to punt the ball a lot, they might be finding themselves with that old bugaboo bad field position a lot again today. Uh, we'll say at one time at the beginning of the game, we don't have to mention it anymore, if Delaware is going to win today, they cannot make the mistakes they've been making up to now. So in their three loss, the Blue Hens have turned the football over 25 times. Weather conditions, sunshine, wind will be a factor, and we'll be back with a kickoff, Delaware and Temple, in just one minute. Super E Plus, a new symbol for excellence in energy-efficient homes. For years, home buyers have needed a program that certifies energy-saving construction. So Delmarva Power, with the help of builders and architects, has developed Super E+. Plus. The result? Year-round living comfort, high retail value, and money-saving efficiency. To find out more, contact your Delmarva Power District office and discover the benefits of Super E+. Plus. Whether you're a world-class skier or in competition with yourself, you need a boot that puts you in control. Flexon by Reikley. Its unique rib design flexes naturally. You'll notice an overall improvement in your skiing. Smoother, more powerful control and day-long comfort. Natural flex is the difference. Now available in two convenient rear-entry models. The RX-7 with cable retention and the RX Air. Reikley, the Swiss art in ski boots. Here at Delaware Stadium, the University of Delaware captain Greg Robertson is meeting with the game captains for the Temple Owls. Number 30 is Harold Harmon from Indian River High School in Frankfort, Delaware. Number 36 is Kevin Ross, starting cornerback. Number 69 is starting offensive center Mike Berger. And Bob Shires, a reserve defensive tackle, is big, number 92 as Delaware on the sideline and we had uh, a little spark of interest Howard here even before the captains met at the center of the field as the Delaware band finished playing our national anthem and set up to perform the customary University of Delaware, uh, Delaware alma mater we ran out of time that's right you have to uh, the band has to be off the field in time to start the game on time if they're not if the game is delayed because of uh, pre-game activities or halftime activities. If the halftime runs too long, it's a 15-yard penalty against the home team on the ensuing kickoff. And one of the reasons, or the primary reason, that uh, there was a delay here at the start as Delaware's band came on to perform, Temple University's Cherry and White Band came down from Philadelphia, and they took a little bit of the pre-game activities away. And they ran out of time. Well, usually they have their routines timed pretty good. What it probably was was the two teams stayed out on the field for the warm-up uh, a little bit longer than they customarily do. Delaware will receive to start the first half of play. The Temple sideline. Temple 1-5 and five under their new head coach, replacing the retired Wayne, Ward Wayne Harden, Bruce Arian. In his first year, former assistant to the legendary, the late Paul Bear Bryant at Alabama. And Arians, one of the youngest head football coaches in the country, only 39 years of age. Interestingly, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Temple won the toss line, but they elected to kick off. They took the wind. There is a brisk wind blowing from our left to our right. So uh, conceivably, Delaware could receive the kickoff in both halves. Freshman Jim Cooper, number one, is set to kick off for the cherry and wide of Temple. And he booms it high into the far side and Kason at the 10. 
15 to about the 19-yard line. One of those making the initial hit on him was John Smith, a reserve defensive back in Delaware, will operate from their own 19-yard line on first down. Delaware will have some changes in the offensive set as Gary Johansson has moved in to play the center spot and regular center Matt, uh, Pat McKee is now playing left tackle. Nothing. Absolutely nothing on the first down carry. Kason carries it, but he runs in to Shires, the defensive tackle, and down he goes. Shires is not listed as starting for the cherry and white, but he makes the first hit and had assistance. Loss of a yard, second down and 11 for Delaware. Hammond splits to the far side. That's higher as the wing back on the right. Kason now in motion. Reader, and not much. Back to the original line of scrimmage, the 19-yard line. Tom Kilkenny, there's the Delaware offensive front. John Kason, B.J. Webster, Chris Hire, Dan Reader, Paul Hammond, Mark Rossi, Pat McKee, John Laub is not starting. Steve Pontiacus is also not starting, although Pontiacus has now come in on the third down play. Third down, Delaware. Still needing 10 from their own 19-yard line. This is higher in motion. Reader. Jeff Ward makes the stop. Number 99, Ward's a freshman. Came a long way to play uh, football at Temple. He is the son of a military man and last played his high school football with the American school in Brussels, Belgium. That's a long way from Philadelphia. Now. <laughs> sure is. Mike Anderson comes on to punt. Anderson averaging just under 35 yards a kick. Into the wind. And the Owls just let it go out of bounds. Anthony Young is their punt return specialist. And Temple will have excellent field position just inside of their own. Now just on the Temple side of the 50-yard line. Len, he's listed as a backup on the two deep sheet, but Harold Harmon from Indian River is out there to, to start the game, the first series for Temple. Well, he had a great showing against Delaware a year ago, 209 yards, including a 69-yard touchdown run. First and 10 for the Owls. They place the football at midfield. This is Paul Palmer. Palmer is a freshman from Potomac, Maryland. He puts the football to the Delaware 46-yard line. Not great size, Palmer, 5'9", 168-pounder. He is their leading rusher, 225 yards. One touchdown, he's averaging 4.7 on the run. Second down and six from just outside the Delaware 45-yard line. This is Carter, Russell Carter, in motion. Palmer. Just stacking everything up, and a flag goes down as Palmer goes down. That was after the whistle, too, Len. John Gannon got him around the ankle, and then he had assistance. Face mask call against Delaware, says referee Anthony Chambers. The question now, is it the 5 or the 15? It's the small one. It's the shorter of the two. It's 5, but gives Temple a first down at the Delaware 37-yard line. Carter comes out, and number four, James Edwards, will split to the far side. Good look at number 14, Tim Reardon, senior quarterback from Waterford, Connecticut. Palmer. Palmer finding a little bit of a seam and then gets tripped as he crosses the 35-yard line. Vaughn Dickinson in on the stop for the hen. Doesn't look like much, Howard, but that's five yards. Palmer is a good, strong runner well, when you look at his size. I mean, he's listed at 168 in the program, and you know how accurate the program heights and weights are sometimes. They try to beef him up a little bit. Second down and five, a little better than five at the 33-yard line. This is Edwards in motion. 
Palmer again. It's an all Paul Palmer early here, running him out of the tailback spot. This time to the 30 yard line. A little bit of extracurricular activity over here on the side between Willie Marshall from uh, Temple and uh, Mike Harris from Delaware. They got tangled up with each other after the whistle. Charles Bryce credited with the last stop of Palmer. It'll be third down and a long two at the Delaware 30-yard line. Palmer again. And he is going to be stopped short of the first down six. Sean Riley, number 58, he's just getting up off the ground. And Captain Greg Robertson was on the bottom of the pile. Fourth down. Looks like they're going to go for it. They need a short one, and it's a very short one here on fourth down. Is there such a thing as a big play this early in the game? I don't think so. <laughs> Delaware sacking its defense. Who else? Palmer, and he has the first down. Greg Robertson had a shot at him, let him slip outside, and Palmer almost exclusively the Temple offense here in the first five minutes of play gives the Cherry and White, the Owls, a first down at the Delaware 27-yard line. So the Owls are just testing their manhood. Here's another look at it from the end zone. He just flipped away from Robertson and flipped for the first down. Palmer. This time they stack everything to the blue hands. They're there. Cannon, Pulaski. Both Pulaskis, as a matter of fact, were there. Jim Pulaski wears number 16. Ken Pulaski wears number 30. They're the identical twins, and boy, would they like a big win today. They are from Philadelphia. That's the play the Delaware defense needed the last time. Greg Pronko, that's number 14. Tim Reardon, senior quarterback. Greg Franco is split to the far side. Carter is split out of our view to the near side. Second down and eight. Harmon, he is dragging Riley. This is Harold Harmon. Temple setting it up nicely as they just exclusively ran Palmer and then slipped it to the up back, Harmon. Gain of five on the play. It'll be third down and three. He got four of those yards on his own, Len. Good leg drive by Harmon. He's got good size. 5'9", but he goes 208. Went for better than 200 yards against the Hens a year ago, including that long touchdown jump. The only touchdown on the ball game is Temple 122 to nothing. And now we are going to have Temple as Reardon is trying to check off at the line of scrimmage. The Owls are going to be hit with a delay of game penalty. Apparently, Reardon didn't like the defense. He saw the play he had called for the defense that Delaware came out in, and it took him a little bit too longer to uh, check out. Bill Bailey on the sideline. Bill? Uh, that delay of the game penalty was due to Reardon checking off the line. Almost every play he comes up, he checks off, reads the defense, and changes the play at the line. That's going to happen all game. And here is Temple coming out of the shotgun now on third down and better than seven. Reardon picked up. Don Gannon. Reardon had lots of daylight in front of him had not Gannon been there, Paul Howard. Gannon overran the play and still had time to react and get back and, and get in and make the tackle from behind. And it's a good thing he did because uh, Reardon would have had a first down and a lot more. Here, let's Here take another look at it. Gannon, he just fights off the blocker. And here, as you can see, Reardon's got plenty of daylight in front of him. But down he goes as Gannon gets him at the 32-yard line. This will be Jim Cooper to try a 42-yard field goal attempt. He has the distance, and it is good. Well, he was warming up, Len, from the 50-yard line before Jim the game. Jim Cooper, who is a freshman, kicked off for the Owls, has just booted a 42-yard field goal on the year coming in. Cooper had hit one out of two attempts. He had made one for 43 yards. The one that he missed was from 51 yards, so he has hit now on two out of three. The freshman 
5'11", 181-pounder, number one, put three on the board for Temple as the Owls take a 3 to nothing lead over Delaware here in the first quarter. And we have about seven and a half minutes remaining to be played. Delaware, with the opening kickoff, unable to move, trapped deep in their own territory. And they had to give it up on the punt by Anderson that sailed into the wind and was held up a bit. And the Owls, gambling on a fourth down play, picked up a first down with Palmer doing the honors. But then Delaware rose to the occasion, and Cooper had to come on and try the field goal. Temple three, Delaware nothing. A year ago, Temple had Bob Clouser kicking field goals galore against the Hems. He kicked five on that occasion as the Owls won in Philadelphia 22 to nothing. Case on, and he is hit hard. Quickly downfield is Todd Hirschman. Hirschman is number seven, and he's coming off now. Hirschman made the hit in with the bomb squad. Hirschman is a senior from Brooklyn, and Delaware again will have four field positions. That was a good kickoff that time. It, was, it wasn't very deep, but it was high, and it gave Temple plenty of time to get down and cover it. And here, yeah, you can see Kaysan, and then here's number seven, Hurstman. He rides into him, first and ten at the 18-yard line as we go to live action, and this is Kaysan. Trapped down behind the line of scrimmage. The Owls ready. Todd Bowles, who is the rover back, number 15, for Temple. He comes across quickly, and there's a loss of a long wall of the play. Second down, 12 will be upcoming for the Blue Hen. Temple basically plays a 4-3 defense, Len, but a lot of times you'll see all three linebackers up on the line. Higher in motion. bring it in he had cleared very quickly and you could probably hear the crowd yelling throw the football <laughs> but webster remember he's rolling to his left and, and he's got to take a second or so to set up delaware's leading receiver another look at it i think we're going to see that it was a little bit overthrown and even if he had caught it he would have been out of bounds but Hammond has gotten the defense beat can't yes, bring it in Right near the sideline, he had beaten Purvis Herger, the cornerback on the left side. Third down and 12 for Delaware from their own 16-yard line. That's Paniakis setting up tight here on the near side. Webster, they've got him stacked up. Jeff Ward in company with Tim Hanley. Number 94 is Hanley. Ward is 99, and Delaware will be forced to punt it away again. Once again, Anderson kicking into the wind. He did a pretty good job last time. Anthony Young is standing at midfield to return Anderson's punt. The wind high, ties it up here is Young, and he has felt it quickly. This has been one of uh, Temple's problems in their one and five record. They have two turned the ball over. They fumbled 17 cannot. times this year. Delaware, of course, uh, is. has turned it over a lot more. He gets away from the first man, and then he is about it. The ball is just bouncing around. That ball was actually stripped out of his hand. He had pretty good control of it. Back to action, Webster, he is throwing for Hire, and Hire has the reception up here at the 43-yard line. Chris Hire with a fine reception, a quick pickup of six for the Blue Hens. Following the turnover by Anthony Young. Young has had his moment returning punt. He returned a couple of year ago for scores for Temple. But that time he coughed it up in Delaware, trying to take advantage of it now. Quick pickup of six on the fast play from Webster to Hire. Second down and four at the 42 and a half. Reader, they just stack everything up. First man in on him was Eric Haas. Last week. Well, let me check myself here. It was Tom Kilkenny, 57, not 67. Last week, Young returned 172 yards, but had it called back on a penalty. 
And we have a blue end taken up. Mark Rossi had to be assisted to the sideline. A leg injury. And Paul Chakotis has replaced him. That's in the offensive front for Delaware. Third down and a long three. And as the pass was thrown, we had a flag drop. And let's see if Delaware is going to be hit with a procedure call. Referee is Anthony Chambers. That's what it, it is. is procedure against Delaware. So that wipes out the first down. That flag, and actually a whistle was blown just as the pass was unloaded. Evidently Hammond in motion, just a little prematurely. Five yard step off, putting the ball back at the 39 yard line. Tubby Hammond uh, not too happy with the call on the sideline. Third and eight. Tim Sager now in a tight end here on the near side. Here is nothing. Yeah, there's a flag. Uh, now a flag is thrown, and we have one official say no, and the other official throws the flag as <laughs> Jerry Enzo tried to make his cut. There was contact. That was obvious interference. It was the referee that was about 20 yards away that called it, though. Here's the call. Tubby Raymond talking things over with guy Jerry Enzo. Here we go. Take another look at it. Jerry Enzo to the top of the screen. And he is out of our uh, view, but as Webster unloads it, he gets tangled up. And the call will go against Temple and gives Delaware a first down at the 43 and a half yard line. And Darienzo comes in and Sager goes out. So Delaware will be operating with two wide outs, Darienzo and Hammond. Hammond to the far side, Darienzo to the near side, and now B.J. Webster wants to ask for a timeout. As Darry Enzo goes to the huddle, Webster goes to the sideline, and a little confusion here. That's what it looked like. He, I don't know whether he saw something that Temple was, was lined up with that uh, that was, didn't show up in the game films that they watched that they weren't prepared for, or whether there was just some confusion among the uh, Delaware offensive players as to what play was going to be run. But in either case, uh, B.J. did the right thing. It's better to, to waste the time out and avoid making the big mistake that would give Temple the ball than to run a play and, and not be sure of yourself. The Owls hitting for three points on a 42-yard field goal by Jim Cooper. On their first possession, they had great field position following the punt by Anderson into the wind that was held up at midfield. Gambling on a fourth down call with less than a yard to go. Palmer made the first down, and then after Delaware came up with a defensive play by John Gannon to stop Reardon, the Owls went for the three, and they got it. Barry Enzo into the near side, Hammond to the far side. This is first down, Delaware, at their own 43-yard line. Flag is down. Reader has the reception here in midfield, but we'll have to check out the flag that was thrown as the play evolves. That's going to be either a procedure or a hold against Delaware, I'm sure, judging from where the flag was thrown. Here comes the preliminary signal. Illegal procedure against Delaware. Anthony Chambers gives the signal, and uh, we are off to a very hesitating start here. Now, we have played almost 10 minutes here in the first quarter, but we've run into a lot of flags. The ball set back five yards, back to the 38. First down and 15 as Tim Sager comes into the Delaware huddle. The ball has never crossed midfield yet. It was on the 50 once on the first Delaware kick, but has never been in Temple territory. That's Kaysan in motion. Fire, and they get back to five that they lost on the penalty as Meyer goes down right out the 43-yard line. 
Hanley made the stop on him. Hanley is the defensive end, number 94, on the far side. Junior from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Second down and 10. Delaware trying to cross into Temple territory. Hammond. All Hammond with the reception. He's Delaware's number one receiver. Came into this contest with 21 catches on the air. The youngster from Concord High School in Wilmington, Delaware, and he and B.J. congratulate each other. Delaware into Temple territory. I knew if I said that, that would happen. <laughs> as soon as you say something hasn't happened. Tim Slagle is in the contest now, and he is setting up as a receiver into the near sideline out of our view. Reader carries it, but not for much. They're looking for a reader, and Ken Stubolo, number 93, with assistance, knocks Reader off his feet. Reader, Delaware's number one rusher. Two-yard pickup on the play. Slagle goes out. John Kaysan replaces him as Delaware is trying to give Temple some new looks with some new people. That's Hammond split to the far side. Iyer, Chris Iyer has the reception for Delaware. Uh, the hens appear, Howard, to be nickel and diming their way down the field. I think uh, maybe that, that might have been part of the problem in a couple of games this year. They, they tried to get too much all at once. Uh, and I think they'd have been uh, Webster's finally you know, is realizing that, that the short stuff is there. You've got to take it. You've got to take what the other team gives you. That is a quick pop. That will bring up a third down and five at the 38-yard line of Temple. Temple leading here first quarter, three to nothing. Webster's got the first down as he's inside the Temple 30-yard line. And the fans appreciate it. That's something that Delaware has not done on many occasions so far here in 1983. Threaten the flank and then take off and go. That's one of Tubby Raymond's favorite plays, too, Lenny. He calls it the waggle. It's, uh, it's the option where the quarterback rolls out of the pocket, and if he can't find anybody in a hurry, then he's committed to run the ball. And First and 10 at the 29-yard line. Hammond this time will split into the near side. And Iyer will set up as a wingback right. Now Kaysan in motion. Reader. And Reader's got four. Bob Valtunas. He's the left inside linebacker for Temple. He makes the stop. Danny Reader out of Christiana High School. You know the story. Went to Boston College. Didn't like it in New England and decided to come back home. Second down and seven. And it's a short seven for the Hens. Webster drills it. Hammond got it. Paul Hammond makes the catch. That was a good catch, too, because he had Kevin Ross all over his back. And we have a flag dropped where Hammond was dropped by Ross. I think it's a face mask. Let's take yep. another look. And look, boy, he certainly... <laughs> yeah, he's got his hand up under there doing something. Well, Ross did everything he could to keep Hammond from catching that ball, and he still did. And the mark-off following the reception is to the 14-yard line of Temple. First and 10 for the Blue Hens. Case on. Needed the block and didn't get it, and boy, did he ever get belted down. Kevin Ross and company. Ross is a good one. He's a senior cornerback. And we have holding against Delaware that will push Delaware back. We're going to take another look at the hit. Watch Hammond just as he makes a cut. From out of nowhere comes hard charging Kevin Ross. He got hit low there, too. Somebody somebody had him, had him stopped, and he was a sitting duck. The ball is now marked back on the holding call, says referee Anthony Chambers. To the 23-yard line. First down and 17 for Delaware. Driving following Temple's kickoff. 
after the Owls had gone ahead on the field goal. Webster, Audiakis, and we are going to have a flag throw. Audiakis is pushed up. Anthony Young and Audiakis got their feet tangled up, Howard. I, I, I'm sure it was accidental, but, but nonetheless, it affected the outcome of the play. Young did get his feet in between Pontiacos, and, and that's what prevented that pass from being completed. Pontiacos had cleared the area. Here is Webster rolling. And just as Pontiacos starts to clear away from Young, the feet get tangled up. And Delaware has a first and goal at the Temple two-yard line. First and goal, Delaware at the Temple 2. Webster, great defensive pressure put on him, and a fine stop is Tim put Hanley. on him by Tim Hanley. Hanley looking for Webster, and Delaware thrown in arrears here back to the 13-yard line. Hanley was on Webster just that quick. And I thought Webster hid the ball well that time. Look, he just... He had a blocker in front of him, but Kaysan could not keep out Tim Hanley. Second and goal, this time from the 13-yard line. Kaysan, not much riding as Hanley again is there on the defensive stop for Temple. He had help that time from Tom Kilkenny, but Delaware is having their problems trying to clear Tim Hanley out of that corner. Hanley seemed to know what was coming that time. He was in the right place. On the sideline, Bill Bailey's getting first-hand action right now. Bill? Delaware's had a lot of trouble throwing the ball this year. Temple's stacking eight men on the line because they know that. Delaware's having a little success right now throwing, but what that's also going to do is open up the running game for us. So a lot of the success of the offense depends on quarterback D.J. Webster today. Webster now faced with a third down. Just outside the 12-yard line. Under pressure, Webster tosses it up. Having touchdown! Boy, did Webster get belted as he let that ball go. That's a miracle that pass was completed. He, he threw it up and had a touchdown. Hammond had to wait for the ball to come down. He probably thought that it was never <laughs> going to come down. And the Blue Head fans, they love it. Remember, this is Delaware that did not score against Temple a year ago and went on to finish Here, watch second. This. Watch this hit. Oh, oh that hit that Webster rubber. took. Todd Bowles, the rover back, he unloads, but Hammond keeps his eye on the ball. Gasson, extra point try is no good. It is off to the right, but Delaware has the lead here. I At think the wind carried that. Delaware Stadium, the wind probably got a little bit of that football as Tim Hanley, he did his best for Temple. Junior from Norristown, Pennsylvania comes off, but Delaware with a sustained drive, something the hands have not had here in 1983. Standing ovation. Fans love it. Webster really got his clock cleaned by Bowles, the rover back. Got but bowled he, over, I guess. <laughs> he got bowled over his right by Bowles. But Hannah waited for the ball to come down nicely. And Delaware has taken a 6-3 lead here in the first quarter of play. We have 24 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Temple is 1-5, but everybody knows the Owls' record. They defeated Syracuse to open the season under their new head coach, Bruce Arian. Then they lost to Pittsburgh, Penn State, East Carolina last week. Cincinnati had a crack at them in there, and Boston College with their great quarterback Doug Flutie. John Gasson receiving the football to kick off. Let home quest and Howard Gesner as SpectraVision brings you University of Delaware football. And we'll be on the road the next couple of weeks down in Virginia for James Madison University and then up to Rhode Island. This is Paul Palmer to the near side. Anthony Young is in the center of the field to return the kick. And this is Young. And he has the football out to the 40-yard line. For Delaware, making the stop on him was Matt Houghtonshield. Jim Palaski almost had him back about the 15-yard line. 
So Delaware following the turnover, the fumbled punt. Watch number 16 come in here now and just miss it. Good shot of our end zone, of our end zone camera. And that was Purvis Perter on the kickoff return, not Anthony Young. Purvis Perter, he's a freshman, averaging 17 yards on his kickoff, and he helped his average on that one. Here is Reardon to Palmer, and the Hens are waiting for Palmer out of the tailback spot. I think Reardon better find another play. Looks well, like Delaware is waiting for Palmer. Well, I'll tell you, Howard, uh, at the beginning of the year, this is a triple option offense that Arians would like to instill at Temple. But Reardon got banged up early in the year, and he is still playing with a sure shoulder, uh, shoulder, his left shoulder, not his throwing shoulder. As we have reached the end of the first quarter, we'll continue our story in the second quarter. Delaware 6 and Temple University 3 as we have reached the end of the first quarter here at the stadium in Newark. How do you really know when you're overweight? When you step on the scale, and the scale steps back. When your zipper has finally lost its zip. When trying to go up really gets you down. You can lose that extra weight and still enjoy balanced, filling meals with Nutrisystem from Weight Loss Medical Center. No calorie counting, no difficult food decisions. Nutrisystem is a pre-measured, pre-packaged, and medically supervised eating program. Call now for a free consultation. Weight Loss Medical Center. When I asked Karen to be my wife, I wanted a special engagement ring. I went to Continental Jewelry. They showed me a lot of diamonds and settings so I could see for myself why some diamonds are worth so much more than others. At Continental, they're professional. They give an accurate gem lab analysis on any diamond so you're certain to get quality and they spend the time to make sure you're satisfied. I was proud to give Karen a ring I knew was special from Continental Jewelry. We'll be back again tonight at 10 with all the latest news, weather, and sports. When First State News 530 edition goes off, the First State News team doesn't lock up and go home. On the contrary, they're back out on the street finding the latest news for First State News' 10. Fresh news, factual, informative, complete. The kind of news you expect and the kind we're dedicated to providing no matter when it happens. Take a look at today's PA high-tech radio from the Pacific. They're the tough American, high-performance radial tires born of high technology. And we've got them all. I'm Jim Baxter, your BFW distributor, and we're really proud of our star performers. The sophisticated Advantage PA, the sporty radial PA, the rugged radial all-terrain PA, or any of our complete BFW lineup. No matter what, how, or even where you drive, you'll find the best in product, Prices and services right here at Delaware Tire Center. We're located directly across from the University of Delaware Stadium on South College Avenue in Newark. And here's just some of the ways we save you money. You see, we don't charge you for the services you need when you buy new tires. Mounting, new valve stems, rotation services, and even computer spin balancing are absolutely free with your tire purchase. So check the bottom line. First quality tires, low prices, free services. Your best buys are at Delaware Tire Center in Newark. Back to action at Delaware Stadium, and on a second down call from inside his own 45-yard line, quarterback Tim Reardon finds Paul Palmer out of the backfield, and the Owls are deep in Delaware territory at the 22-yard line, first and 10 for Temple. 38-yard pass play, Len. Palmer. And grabbing an ankle and not letting go is Charles Bryce. The de defensive tackle. We're going to take a uh, look at that first down play. While we were away, it was Reardon. Here's the end zone look at it. Harmon's doing a little blocking for him, and now he's going to go out as a receiver, but straight down the middle. Palmer with the reception, and then Delaware has to come over late with Pulaski on the hitch. Here is Reardon under a rush. He's throwing the football, and Palmer's got it, and he drops it. Is it ruled a completion? No. No completion. Palmer had it, and he dropped it, and the official right on the spot 
indicating no completion. Tim Reardon, he'd like to talk with him, but the official just walks away. Bill Maley is right where Temple is on offense right now, Bill. For Temple quarterback Tim Reardon audibles almost every play. What he's doing is reading the safeties, Kenny and Jim Pulaski. So what ends up, you end up with a count and mouse game between the safeties trying to hide it and the quarterback trying to get the defense. So you might want to watch that throughout the game. Watch the safeties flipping back and forth. Third down and nine. Thank you, Bill. There they Fort go. Temple. Just outside the 21-yard line. The blitz is on. And Reardon and Z goes down. Putting the heat on him was Joe Quigg. I don't know whether Joe's going to get credit for a sack or not. He has to. <laughs> He's the leading sacker for the hens, Joe Quigg. Blitzing in that time on Reardon. And this is Temple with Reardon at the controls in arrears here on offense. Back to the 30-yard line, and they're going to bring in... Jennifer. Jennifer. Now, remember, if the field goal unit came on, they would be kicking. There's number 19 giving a little traffic signal. Kip Schenefeld, reserve quarterback, 44-yard average on his punch, but before the play can start, Temple is going to be hit with a five-yard penalty delay of game. That's not going to bother Schenefeld at all. Five more yards with his average and kicking into the wind. It might make it easier for him to find the corner. Give him, give him a little more room to work with. Now Temple sends in another whole unit. Well, when you play 1A football, you've got to have a lot of people. But Schenefeld, uh, he's standing on the 50, so it'll be about the 45 when he's where he actually kicks it from. Joe Campbell for Delaware to return, standing at the 10-yard line. Off the side of his foot, he's angling for the corner, and he's going to get a good piece of it as it dies and finally bounces out of bounds at the six-yard line. So Delaware, Kip Schenefeld, he does his job for the he out. Sure did. There he is coming off the field. He's a rangy young guy, 6'4", 213-pounder from Trevos, Pennsylvania. 44.8-yard average. That time, not so much for distance and average but to pin Delaware deep, and that is exactly what he has done. Actually, he looked a little bit disappointed. I think he kind of hoped to get it inside the five. All kickers think that way. Sure. First and ten for Delaware. This is Delaware leading at six to three. Kaysan, and he's got a little running room. Good yardage. John Kaysan, up close to the 15-yard line as Delaware's up front blocking does the job. Remember, there are some changes in the Delaware forward wall. John Laub is now in. There's big number 68. Yeah, for the second week in a row, the Delaware offensive line has a, has a big job in front of them. Last week, they faced a line against Towson State that any NFL team would be proud to have it in terms of weight. And uh, this Temple defensive line is no small kids either. Here is Reeder. Danny Reeder, he spins away for a first down as Delaware pushes the football out over the 20-yard line to the 22-yard line. Dan Reeder, who came into the contest, averaging 4.7 yards, 389 yards on the year, and also with three catches from out of the backfield. Delaware first down at their own 22-yard line. Heads leading it here, second quarter action. Six to three. Delaware's touchdown pass from Webster, who got belted on the play, to an eagerly waiting Paul Hammond. John Kaysom on the carry. Not a whole lot of room in the, into the middle of the Temple defense. The defense primarily has number 94, Tim Hanley, at one end position. 99, Jeff Ward at the other. 93, Ken Stubolo is at left tackle. And the right tackle is 98, Jerry McDowell. And they use four backers. Second down and seven at the 25. Webster goes down. Just went a little bit too long. And Hanley. Hanley got the first hand on him. Hanley with his uh, strength. 6'2", 228 pounder. He got the hand on... Here is offside going to be called against Temple. A flag thrown far across the field. 
Delaware gets a break. Yeah, Webster had been trapped behind the line of scrimmage and instead of. Well, maybe that's why he was trapped. Third down <laughs> and. Uh, I don't think so. Hanley's playing on this <laughs> side of the field. Now he's coming out. Hanley's going to be replaced in the forward wall. 54 is in there now. Steve Dominowski here at the left defensive end position. Second down and just a little bit more than a yard as Meyer is the intended receiver. Ross is covering him on the near side. That was just uh, a, a quick out looking for the first down, and uh, Webster threw the ball a little bit behind him. Third down, and Hanley is back in, and Dominowski is out for Temple. Ty Darienzo will come on to replace Paul Hammond. Hammond, the touchdown maker. That was his third touchdown reception of the year, by the way. Third down, and a long one at the 30. Kason. Kason has the first down, and he's out over the 40-yard line to the 42-yard line. Don Kason, B.J. Webster, is doing an artful job of picking apart the Temple defense, especially the backers. Let's take another look. You see Kason in motion. And he is That's wide perfectly open. Perfectly thrown pass. Barry Enzo trying to get back uh, to throw a block for him, but very wisely laid off when he knew that he wasn't going to get back there in time. First and 10 from the 42. Case on inside, but not a whole lot. He's got a couple. But Hanley is there quickly. And Shires is also there. That's Bob Shires, the defensive tackle, and one of the game captains for Temple. Bobby Raymond and company on the sideline. Sunshine, but brisk here at the stadium in Newark. Second down and seven from the 45. Higher. Skittering down as Ross makes the cover. But Higher out distance. Todd Bowles, the rover back, and picks up yardage into Temple territory at the 41-yard line. Chris Meyer, he has been a receiver on several occasions earlier in the year, but Webster is finding him more perfect, and more. Perfect pass. The Delaware backs are doing a good job of getting open. A good job of getting open. Case on. Meyer. Reader has even caught one. First and ten at the 41. Flag down. Webster, he's going to go down as well. Goes down in a heap. If you can call one man a heap, that's Chuck Cohen, the defensive tackle. That's one thing that Temple has, Howard, and that is plenty of depth. Bill Maley on the sideline. As I said before, Temple stacks eight guys up on the defensive line. What that does is isolate the running back on a linebacker man-to-man -man coverage. That's just where Delaware's hurting them. With the short passes, the linebackers can't keep up with the speed of the running back. Delaware is going to be... Hit for a penalty here, but I believe Temple's going to say forget it. Procedure was the call. Rather unusual flag thrown in the middle of the offensive line to have procedure. Usually uh, that uh, kind of a flag. It usually comes in the backfield. Holding or yeah. something. But the loss. That's back four yards. To the 45, 46 yard line, almost a five yard loss as Sager sets up here. Now Webster, things are confused again, and BJ's going to go to the sideline and talk things over with head coach Chubby Raymond. Delaware setting up and doing, then doing their customary flip flopping at the line of scrimmage, and then Sager crossed behind Webster and got ready to set up here on the near side. Webster just said, ah, something's not right and decides to talk things over on the sideline. Interesting thing, during the timeout, the entire Temple defense comes over to the, the bench to talk with their coach. Second down and 15 will be facing Delaware. Something else I see today that you don't usually see at Delaware Stadium when Temple's in town, and that's empty seats. Not a lot of them, but there are a few. Well, after all, Temple is 1-5, and five, and Delaware's uh, sputtering itself at 3-3. Three and three. 
And you got to catch those falling leaves sometime, Alex. <laughs> That's right. Second down and 15 as we are ready to begin play. 9.36 remaining here in the first half. Delaware leads it 6-3. to three. Danny Reeder. As Temple is looking for Webster on the outside, Reeder slips it back inside very nicely. And he's got a quick pop move, almost 10. He got the loss in about five more. Third down and a long five at the 36 yard line of Temple. Number 71. Is Chuck Cohen. There's Tim Hanley, 94. Let's see what Webster wants to do here. And here is oh, Delaware. Here is obvious motion now. I'll tell you, this has probably been, Howard, the most hesitating first half of college football that I've seen in a long time. Well, both both teams are at the point in the season where uh, they look they need they need a win. They, they need a win. I, like you say, you know, with Temple, they're they're going up against number eight and number four the next two weeks in a row. And uh, if they lose here today, it could be a real real long season for them. And Delaware, of course, if they lose today, that would be four losses at home. Well, they step off against Delaware. Third down and a little better than ten. Here's Kaysaw with a blocker in front of him. Kaysaw hurdles for the first time. Great effort by John Kaysaw. Kaysaw was Great effort. effort. The block was thrown on his behalf. Out in front of him by Doug Martin, number 60, the pulling guard from Union, New Jersey. Take a look. And here is number 60. He's just looking for any white shirt, and he finds one. And Delaware has the football at the 28-yard line of Temple. That's just like you draw it in the playbook. Reader, nice job of cutting back Dan Reader. He really, he went into that hole uh, sideways. Well, that's all the room they had in there for him. <laughs> if he went in there squared up, he wouldn't have gotten what he did. He got about four on the play to the 23-yard line. Second down, and it's a... Five-yard situation for Delaware. Yeah, Long looks, five at that. Looks a closer to six. Kaysaw! First down again, I believe. It's going to be very close. It all depends on where they say he crossed the sideline. And the yeah. long look from referee well, Anthony Chambers. And he's they're putting it on the 20. He's going to have the chain brought in from this side to the far side. I'm going to, I'm going to take a quick look here and. Here is Kason with the reception, and he's out of bounds. And then we get a little bit of a shove after he is already out of bounds. I think it's going to be about six inches short, Len. And Tom Kilkenny, number 57, just wanting to make sure that Kason was out of bounds for good. Yeah. Seven inches. That was off by an inch. Delaware a little bit short. Third down. Just that much. And now the Sherry and White of Temple. You can bet your <laughs> Bippy. <laughs> anything you want. They'll be stacking. And they've got plenty of beef to stack. Well, let's see. So you're looking at uh, 218, 242, 253, and 231 across that front four. And they'll probably have the linebackers up there, so you can add a 219, a 215, and a 236 to that. And with Delaware's short passing game so far today, they've got to be a little wary. That would be a good call here. Third and inches at the Temple 18-yard line. Webster, he just wedges forward. The crowd got a little restless as they thought <laughs> Delaware was going to use too much time. <laughs> Webster knew what he was doing. I think he was trying to draw Temple off. I think he got the seven inches he needed and two more. <laughs> he didn't get a whole lot going behind center Jerry, uh, Gary Johansson. He's, Johansson. Got the, he's got the first down, though. Now Temple wants him to measure. The referee seemed pretty sure, but Temple uh, asked for the measurement, so 
They'll pull the chains out again. I, from yeah. here, it looks it looks like he's got it. They have the right to request that. Anytime. Being as close as it is, I'm sure the officials are going to grant their request. They stretch the chain. The length of a football and about three inches. Well, we saw where they spotted the chains, but they stretched them out. And believe me, folks, it was there. Delaware achieving a first down. The only way that wouldn't have been a first down is after the last measurement if they brought the chains back and didn't put them in the same place. First and ten for Delaware at the Temple 17-yard line. There he is. Webster, Maniakis. Can't bring it in. Covered back there by Kevin Ross. And I don't think he would have been able to stay within the confines of the end zone either. It was a little bit overthrown, but it, it was a good time for Webster to overthrow because Paniakos was pretty well covered. So the hands will regroup. Delaware scoring on the touchdown pass by Webster. To Hammond in the first quarter as Webster took that belt. By Todd Bowles, second down and 10 at the 17. Kason. Don Kason. And he's been able to step away from Hanley. He was gone. Well, it looks like. Let me correct myself. The man who had an ankle on him and wouldn't let go was Paul Drugas, or Dergas. It looks Paul like uh, Temple went for the motion to the other side, to the left. And it, it left a little bit of room on the right side of the line, and that's, that's what uh, left that five yards open for Kaysom. Dara, who is identified as the left outside linebacker, Paul Dara, 34, from McDonald, Pennsylvania. Third down and four at the 11. And he just throws it away to Webster. He saw that his man yep. Hammond was covered. And he the, did the uh, wise thing. The fans, some of the fans, a little bit restless, but there again, that was, that was the play. And uh, in previous weeks, he would have thrown into that coverage. B.J. would have tried to throw it in there. And it hadn't been working in the past, and he decided to forget about it. Blake Lane will do the holding. John Gasson will try the field goal from the 17. It looks good. It is good. 27 yards. Delaware up by six. So Delaware. Has taken a nine to three advantage over Temple. Here with 626 remaining until halftime as John Gasson hits the field goal, 27 yarder. And even though Gasson has had uh, some problems on extra point tries, in fact, uh, on the year he had missed two extra points. He has now missed three with the one following Hammond's touchdown reception. He is three out of four in field goal attempts. Well, uh, again, I, I'm not making excuses for him, but on, on the extra point try this afternoon, you look up and you look at those flags, and that wind is coming straight across the field, and the extra point attempt was wide to the right. And, you know, there's no question in my mind that he got it up in the wind, and the wind just carried it wide of the of the field, of the goal post. So, number seven, Don Gasson setting up to kick off. Purvis Perder. Is in the center of the field, standing up the goal line to return the kick by Gasson. Herder at the 12. Single man downfield for Delaware. And making the hit on him nicely is Joe McHale, reserve linebacker. And Temple will have it at their own 25-yard line. This is the quote-unquote worst field position of the day for <laughs> Temple. It's the worst field position a, a team playing Delaware has had in about three weeks. I don't think that's true, but it just seems <laughs> like that way. Here is Reardon at quarterback. Mix up. Harmon. And the Blue Hens are just stacking for Harmon. They do a little reading uh, between games, and they remember what he did to them last year, and that's not to mean that he can't do it to them again here this weekend, but so far, Harold Harmon out of Indian River High School has been signing by the Delaware defense. He was up for that hand up, just a little hand off, a little too early that time. Just a yard pickup, second down and nine. 
Wide open is the receiver as Pulaski's got him here on the sideline. The reception is made by Greg Funko. And he'll stay on the sideline here now. First down at the 45-yard line. Franco on the reception. He's a junior. That's only his seventh of the year, so they don't go to him too often. Marshall and Carter, twin receivers to the far side. Palmer, and he just follows the stack for about five into Delaware territory, make it six. As he rides behind the upfront blocking of number 60, Kurt Bamberger. Charlie Bryce almost had him behind the line of scrimmage that time. Holler has got that good quickness, the quick burst. Just a freshman, just 17 years of age. A he mere got, child. He got six on the play. Second down and four at the Delaware 49. This is Moore, the fullback, Roderick Moore. And let me uh, identify the uh, ball carrier again is Harold Harmon. We haven't seen Roderick Moore. He is uh, listed as the starting fullback. But we have seen Harmon go all the way. Spectre Vision bringing you Blue Hand Football Sundays on WNS TV in Wilmington, Storer Cable TV in Dover, Simmons Cable TV in Harrington. Glad to have them all along for the Blue Hand Special brought to you by Spectre Vision throughout the 1983 season. Here is a juggling ball carrier to the sideline. I don't think he got the first down. That's Keith Armstrong. Armstrong started the season as a tailback, running back. He came into this contest at the stadium as listed as the tight end. That's right. how banged up the Temple is. They've had to use some different people. He's going to be very close to a first down. But watch the bobble here. He never really does never, get a good angle. Never has angle. control. Look, oh boy, if somebody could have hit him there. And he just does manage to get control as Jimmy Newfrock comes up. And Temple is going to be short. About one link of the chain. I mean, it is that close. You can't really see how close it is. Oh. It is just that much. Fourth down. Of course, Temple going for it. Four and a half minutes remaining. Still halftime. Delaware up by six now. At nine to three. Reardon just he got it. forward, and he's got the first down. He's good size at 6'1". Looks like a strong legged, 180 pounder. He is game in and game out. Delaware's number, Temple's number one guy, averaging uh, with his passing and his running 134 yards per game. First and 10 at the Delaware 44 yard line. Marshall and Carter to the far side. Here is Carter with the reception. He's at the Delaware 31-yard line. Russell Carter, the junior from Brooklyn, New York. That was a good play on the part of Temple. Reardon was under pressure that time. I didn't get the number of the player who was in there on him, but uh, Price was chasing. Down. Here we go. We'll take another look at it. Gavin can't get there. Bryce can't get there, and he whistled that football. And a fine oh, reception by reception. Carter at the 21-yard line of Delaware. Palmer. And Palmer slowed at the line of scrimmage, and then he fumbles the football, and Delaware's got it! <laughs> Joe Quigg! <laughs> Joe Quigg, who has been such a key defensive player all season for the Blue Hens, comes up with the fumble by Palmer. He got turned around a little bit as he took the handoff. The man who put a shoulder into him was Eric Leak. Almost the forgotten man of the right. Delaware defensive scheme. If you had to guess somebody who was going to be in there to recover the fumble and you weren't looking, who would you who would you guess? Number 19. At the 15-yard line, 16-yard line, and this is Cape Bond. He's got some running room inside. Out to the 24-yard line, quick pop of eight. And John Cason does his thing for the hens. 
Don, a touchdown maker on two occasions in the first six ball games, averaging uh, just under four yards a carry. And also a fine receiver. And we've seen him on the receiving end of B.J. Webster's passes here today. Second down and two at the 24. This is a good place for a pass. Reader just stacked up. Temple looking for a reader. And Ken Stubbolo, number 93, introduces him to himself to Danny Reader. I was kind of looking for the quick out to the to a back out on the, you know, out near the sideline that time to get the get the first down yardage and maybe even spring loose and get some get some additional yardage running. Well, I, I would imagine that that was what BJ was hoping the Temple was looking for too. <laughs> Third down and two from the 24. There's the first down catch. That's the one I was looking for last time. Ty Darienzo makes the reception. And we have a blue hand shaken up back here on the 15-yard line. It's Pat McKee. And he appears to be in some pain. Here's the replay. Darienzo, and then he is knocked out of bounds. Defensing on the play for Temple is Purvis Herter. Herter is in there now in place of Anthony Young, and there is Pat McKee. He is down. And when we first spotted Pat, he appeared to be in severe pain. It looked to me more like maybe he just had the wind knocked out of him. He tried to get up and couldn't. I don't, I don't think it's a leg, you know, a knee or an ankle. Delaware gave up three points to Temple on a field goal. Well, he is limping a little bit. D.J. Webster in the huddle. Trying to inspire the hands on. Webster has already hit for a touchdown pass to Paul Hammond. And then the 27-yard field goal by John Gaston. And that's why Delaware leads it here at 9-3. to three. Temple. Getting a long-distance field goal from Jim Cooper of 42 yards. First time they touch the football. First and 10, Delaware at their 29. Oh, oh God, Kaysaw. He almost. just needed one more step, and he was gone, Howard. Yes, he was. John Kaysaw running with authority and getting some great blocking up front. Let's watch it from the end zone. Here he comes. Right up the middle. Oh, One more boy. step. Anthony Young was the man who got him. Young has it. shifted over to a safety spot, and Purvis Herter is now playing the corner spot on the back side. Now that was a good switch because he saved Temple six points there. First and ten at the 42. Just a little bit too long for Dan Reeder. And again, Reeder was open. As pressure was being put on by Todd Hurston against B.J. Webster, and Webster unloaded it in a hurry. B.J., whose daddy played high school football uh, at Conrad High School back in the 50s. That his daddy might remember, have known Dallas Green. Some people will remember uh, Billy Joe Webster as a center and linebacker for Conrad High School. Second down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Kaysan in motion. Reader fouls for a couple. But they're looking for him. Ken Stubbolo, 93. Third down and eight. Delaware will flip-flop his tight ends. Pontiacus now coming on, and Sager goes off. Delaware on the road the next two weeks at James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and then up into New England to Kingston, Rhode Island, and the Rams. Third and eight from the 44. Oh. Webster, he is back. Gary McDowell gets to a big number, 98. He's a senior, 253-pounder from Shavertown, Pennsylvania. And Delaware will have to give up the football. But they could have held that line just about another half a second. I think Webster had found somebody open. And Anderson will come on to punt. He will be kicking with a trailing wind as Temple is setting up a return. He booms it out of there. This is Anthony Young at the 23. 
that he cannot get past the second man as Delaware has Tom Gibbons, the reserve linebacker, number 54, downfield, and he had plenty of help as Young got away from the first wave, did not get away from Gibbons, and the Owls will have it at their own 25-yard line with 43 seconds on the halftime clock. I think that was Jim Newfrock who almost had him. Reardon has the ability to go long and in a hurry, remember. That's off. Harmon with the reception just to the 30-yard line. As Delaware's defensive secondary that time covering well, and Reardon had to throw to the swing man. They forced Reardon to go to the short man to the safety valve. Second down and five into the shotgun formation. At the 30, here's the reception by Marshall. Willie Marshall has the reception for Temple. As the Owls pick up a first down, we'll wait for the spot. Marshall, number 84, making the reception. Good stick in there that time. I think it was Joe Quigg. It was. Joe Quigg Boom. makes the hit. Marshall goes down, and now Temple has asked for and has received a timeout with the clock showing 13 seconds as Tim Reardon comes over to talk things over with first-year head coach Bruce Arian. Bruce, former assistant to the legendary Paul Bear Bryant at Alabama. I wonder if there's ever any confusion uh, when they're talking because, let's face it, Bruce <laughs> Arians has a little there. bit of play That's there. Right. <laughs> I'm sure Timmy, every once in a while, Timmy is a Philadelphia uh, Waterford, Connecticut boy, so he's got his own problems. You know, the Connecticut doesn't have much of a New England accent. You've got to get up into Massachusetts before you, uh, before you, you get that New England accent. You'll notice that next week when we go to Rhode Island. They don't talk funny in Rhode Island. Well, actually, next week I'm going to go to Virginia. I'm sorry, two weeks from now. I'm going to go to Rhode Island. This is first and ten Temple at their own 42-yard line. 13 seconds left here in the first half. Reardon. Riley misses him. Now Riley gets a second shot at him at the 29-yard line, but that has ended the first half of play. That was the good part about that play. It ran out the clock. But you got to give the Delaware secondary a lot of credit. They gave Reardon absolutely nothing. There's a 28-yard run that took 13 seconds. This 4-4 time is not good at all. Well, anyway, he's done a lot of shifting, too. <laughs> Timmy Reardon run down when Sean Riley had a second shot at him and Delaware goes off with a 9 to 3 halftime advantage over the favor Temple Owls here at Delaware Stadium in Newark and we'll be back in a moment. Come see the Italian Stallions at Buck Cycle Shop, the high-performance 900 SEI Benelli. Perfectly balanced, six-cylinder machine. The Laverta 1000 RGS has changed the form of sporting bikes. The refined elegance of the Italian style. Lightweight frame and 1000 cc of power. We're authorized dealers of Triumph, Full Taco, Moto Guzzi, Laverta, and Mongeza. Also, we're authorized dealers of the Weed Hopper, the ultralight airplane. See them all at Buck Cycle Shop, 2701 Northeast Boulevard in Wilmington. Call 764-2876. Hello and welcome to H.A. Winston's. At H.A. Winston's you can enjoy a variety of warm and comfortable atmospheres, whether for dinner or for cocktail. The menu features our world famous onion soup, fresh salad. And don't forget the free salad card. And Italian specialties, fresh seafood, and fine chicken delicacies. Top off your meal with one of our homemade desserts. The friendly and courteous service invites you to relax and enjoy yourself at H.A. Winston's. 100 Elkton Road in historic Granary Station, Newark, Delaware. Won't you join us? You saw it first on First State News. Just another catchy phrase designed to grab your attention? Think again. When a story breaks, day or night, First State News is there, letting you know what the big stories will be in the newspapers the next day, getting the news from the newsmakers, showing you places to go and places to avoid. So when you want to know what the story is, make First State News your first choice. The Tile and Carpet Outlet, 1126 Kirkwood Highway, gives you price plus price. The Tile and Carpet Outlet will match or better any price for like materials in Delaware. We're committed to giving you the most for your money. Plus, 
A staff of skilled mechanics deliver the confidence of professional installation. We guarantee our workmanship and quality line of American-made products. Remember, it's always Price Plus, an exclusive promise of satisfaction, available only at the Tile and Carpet Outlet, 1126 Kirkwood Highway, Newark, Delaware. You don't have to go out for Domino's Pizza. When you call us, within minutes, we're custom making your pizza with only pure dairy cheese and delicious toppings. On the road, we keep your pizza hot and to your door in less than 30 minutes. And we never charge for our delivery. But if you think that's good, mm, just wait till you taste it. Call the Domino's Pizza nearest you. Delivery area and times are limited. This is Len Holmquist in company with Howard Gessner at Delaware Stadium in Newark. Halftime activities have been concluded. Delaware leading favorite Temple by a 9-3 to three count. And we're going to uh, take a look, Howard, at our first half statistics. And I think time of possession is going to be interesting. That's a big one. 18.46 for Delaware, 11.14 for Temple. But you know, almost everything else is almost equal. Look at the rushing yardage. One yard difference. The passing yards, only five yards difference. You know, that's, uh, what, a six-yard difference in total yardage. And the turnovers, that is the big that's difference. That's the big one. As far Delaware, as Delaware is concerned. They did fumble once. Uh, John dropped the opening kickoff, but he recovered it himself and ran it back. But, they but that's not, not a turnover. They have not turned the football over, and that has been their big bugaboo in the first six ball games. Temple turning it over twice. Delaware cashing in on one of them. And Delaware's going to start the second half on offense also. Temple won the toss in the first half and took the win. And Delaware had the option in the second half, and they want the ball. Jim Cooper kicking it off for Temple. Angles it across field. And Kaysan's got it at the 15. And not much running room as he is shoved back, but his forward progress is out to the 22-yard line. And the Hens will operate first and 10 with the football to start the second half of play. They lead it here at 9-3 to three over the Owls. John Kaysan running a little bit more than uh, we have seen him in the past couple of weeks in the first half. Kaysan carried the ball nine times for 40 yards, and his longest jaunt was 13 yards. First and 10 at the 22. Kaysan unable to get away from the first man in the backfield. And that's Jerry McDowell, number 98. And Kaysan will be caught for about a yard loss here. B.J. Webster at quarterback. John Kaysan and Chris Hire, the halfback. Delaware still without the services of John Merklinger. Injured two weeks ago. And hopefully the hands will have him back when they go on the road to James Madison in one week's time. This is Reeder, and he gets bounced back rather abruptly by Tom Kilkenny. Kilkenny, the leading sticker, the leading hitter with Temple's defense. Reeder gets about two on the play. Brings up a third down and nine. Third quarter action just underway. Nine to three. Delaware in front of the Owls from Philadelphia. Webster, a little too high for Hammond. I guess they thought he had Steve Paniatos out there. Todd Bowles was covering on the play, number 15. And the pass delivered high, but Webster was on the mark two-thirds of the time in the first half, hitting 10 out of 15 passes for 90 yards. One touchdown, 11 yards to Paul Hammond. Anderson to punt it away. This is a very uh, belated <laughs> fair catch by Anthony Young. <laughs> Young at about this uh, same spot in the first half. Coughed up the football, and Delaware turned it into six points. That was a signal for survival. <laughs> what it was, Young uh, from Pemberton, New Jersey. Tim Reardon runs the Owl offense, number 14. And let's see if Harmon is in there. Or maybe Roderick Moore. We haven't seen Moore at all. The nominal starting fullback. This is Paul Palmer. Palmer with some daylight. Palmer runs out of real estate. Chased out of bounds by Jim Polowski here on the near sideline. 
But Palmer showing his elusiveness. But once he got through that line, he had all kinds of room. Here we go. Nothing but green. Here comes the blue shirt. And Pulaski forces him to the sideline. This is Temple at the Delaware 28-yard line. Reardon, he just throws it beyond everybody. And that's pretty good coverage that time by the Delaware secondary. I, I think that was an intentional throw. Away. Jim Ermert, number 81, was, for all intents and purposes, the receiver, but Reardon... Once he saw Ermert was covered, he just unloaded it beyond everybody. Second down and 10 at the Delaware 28. Carter, number eight. Willie Marshall, number 84, to the far side. That's Carter in the slot. Here is motion as Palmer takes the handoff. Somebody on the left side of the offensive front for Temple. Jumps the gun just a little bit. You know... We talked last week at the beginning of the game about how we thought that Delaware was going to be passed on a lot because the secondary had appeared weak. And you would think Temple would be thinking that too, but Reardon only put the ball up six times in the first half. Well, they had great success running against Delaware a right. year ago and probably took a long look at those films and said, well, maybe we can do it again. Temple only managing to pick up 66 yards rushing in the first half, but that was one better than Delaware. Fans at 65, but Delaware did have nine points. Temple has three. Step off against Temple back to the 33-yard line. Here is Palmer, and the hands are looking for it. Charlie Price will be on the bottom of that sack. And Palmer gets jumped back here at the 35-yard line. And the Owls now facing a third down, and they'll need 16. Five-yard step-off on the second down play cost him. And then Bryce's quick work on defense. Carter and Marshall to the far side. Wide open. open. Carter, he is going to be short. Russell Carter, wide open, beating the Delaware secondary. Takes him a long reception from Reardon. Kenny Pulaski just got there just in time to save six, at least for the time being. And Carter trying to crawl in for Look the how, score. Look how open he is. Wow. Pulaski has to track him down, or it's six. But here is Temple threatening at the Delaware one-yard line. Palmer. He's Touchdown. In. Number six gets six for Temple. Paul Palmer. He's the freshman halfback. That's how they list him. Lining out of the tailback spot, but they list him as a halfback. 5'9", 168 pounder from Potomac in Maryland. Only his second touchdown of the season. Temple nothing, hasn't scored a lot of points. Nothing fancy there either. Just a power play off right tackle. And Jim Cooper will try to give Temple a one-point advantage as our ball game is knotted up at Nine apiece. It is no oh, good. It. As it is blown off to the left. Cooper not really getting a good hit on it. Now the wind the wind wasn't much of a factor that time, Len. Now he and Holder Lee Salt, number eleven, they come off. Salt is a freshman, but his hold looked good. Cooper just did not hit it well. And Delaware and Temple are tied up. At 9-9, and we have 12-28 remaining to be played here in the third quarter. So Delaware, after taking the second half kickoff and not being able to move, gives the football over to Temple via punt. And the Owls take it in. The long pass play from Reardon to Carter setting it up. Well, Delaware started the first half the same way. They ran three offensive plays and had to punt. Of course, they didn't give up the six points to Temple on their first possession either. Cooper to kick it off. He's in a real battle at uh, Temple with Mike Abbott for the uh, starting honors as far as kickoffs and place kicking. Temple has uh, had a history of fine kicking specialists. This time to the near side. And Chris Hyer is going to have it hit in the end zone. <laughs> that 
fastball came so close to going out of bounds. And it bounces right back up to higher. Temple's drive for the score, 53 yards. Palmer on the touchdown dive of a yard, and it took just a, a little over a minute, just under a minute and 15 seconds. But then the extra point, no good. And we are not at 9-9. Aaron splits into the near side. That's higher as the wing back in motion. Higher. Reader trying to throw a block, but his man effectively rode off that block and rode into All quarterback B.J. Webster. All Dara. He's the left outside linebacker. Webster picked up about two on his lead to the right side. Guy Darienzo into the Delaware huddle. And he'll now split into the near sideline. Second down and seven. Darienzo, first down. Guy Darienzo setting up in front of Anthony Young. Herbert Herder. Put the stop on him. Herder makes the stop, but not before Darienzo gives Delaware a first down here at the 34-yard line. From the end zone, Webster, he drills it. And Darienzo catches it. And then Herder corrals him. First and 10 at the 34-yard line for Delaware. Their own 34. Don Kaysan picks his way for about four. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage and then skittering forward. Jerry McDowell, number 98, coming into our picture. He got an ankle on Kaysan and tripped him up. Oh. McDowell's got some good size, uh, 253 pounds. Tim Hanley finished him off. Hanley seems to be everywhere this afternoon. Hanley's done a very fine job. He was listed as a backup defensive end, but he has been there just about the entire game. Second down and six. Here's Heiner with the reception for a first down as Kevin Ross makes the stop on him. Can we run the tape back and play that part where I say the Delaware backs are getting open? Well, they are getting open, and Webster is doing an excellent job Take of leading the it. football. Not a whole lot of fanciness to it. Just get the half back out on the flat and get the football to him. Ross helping out of the stop. First down, Delaware at the 46-yard line of the hen. Why not? Pontiacus! Steve Pontiacus! He has been somewhat of a forgotten fellow around here after doing such a great job with touchdown receptions early in the year, but Pontiacus makes the reception. He's the junior from Livingston, New Jersey. Well, I think the Temple defense was ready for that play because... Uh, uh, Delaware had been effectively going to the back, out of the backfield, and that time we got the tight end open. First and ten, Delaware marching against Temple at the 36-yard line. Webster fumbles the football, has Reeder fumbled it, and Temple has got the football. Delaware turning it over for the first time, and the Owls come away with the football. Danny Reeder losing, losing his shoe in the process, but Temple has the recovery. Uh, you hate to see that happen right here because Delaware was really moving the ball well. Reader into the line, and he has the football stripped away from him. Looked like Kilkenny, Tom Kilkenny strips the football away. Temple recovers, and they have it first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Going down. John Riley. John Riley gets to Reardon as the defensive secondary does their job this time. And Reardon's going to eat it for about a six-yard loss back to the 25-yard line. Let's give some credit there to Newfrock and Pawlowski and, and Harris. They, they had the Temple receivers covered for a long time. They stayed with them. They didn't give them a chance to get open. Did you, and Reardon had nothing to do. There was nothing he could do. Did you say uh, Pawlowski or Pawlowski? They're both in there, remember? Right. Second down at 16 for the 25. Harmon. And Harmon's got a first down here at the 46-yard line. Harold Harmon, the 
from Indian River High School in Frankfort, Delaware, as we have a blue hen kicking on the play. Charlie Bryce is down back at the 30-yard line. Well, rarely does a checkoff work for this much yardage. Usually it just gets you out of trouble, but Harmon did a good job with the ball once he got it. Look, he's picking his way. It's a screen pass, and he's got the hens leaning the wrong way. And then Pulaski, Ken Pulaski, has to drag him down. Harmon, a standout for Indian River. All state selection. Charlie Bryce goes off. Eric Leakes replaces him in the defensive forward wall for Delaware. First down on that pickup by Harmon. Nice run on, on the second and 16 play. Gives Temple a first at their own 46-yard line. Edwards in motion. Palmer. Boy, did he hit that line quick. He, I mean, he was he was right through. He was one step away from big yardage again. Honor with that explosive burst of speed. He's not got lot, a lot of size, just 168 pounds. Well, he's a tiny little thing. Yeah, he, he doesn't belong out there. He's going to be around <laughs> for a couple of years, too. He is just a 17-year-old freshman. Picked up a quick five, second down and five in Delaware territory at the 49-yard line. James Edwards in motion back to this side. Palmer again with a quick five, and he's got a first down as they are just attacking the Delaware center on defense and doing a good job as he's getting the blocking up front from center Mike Berger, number 69, and the two guards, number 70, John Reinstra, and number 60, Kurt Bamberger. First and 10 at the 42-yard line of Delaware. This is Carter in motion this time. And Raritan is going to run out of bounds short of the first down here at about the 33-yard line. Good thing he ran out of bounds, too, because Sean Riley had him lined up. Reardon showing some uh, elusiveness of his own. Lots of time for uh, Reardon back there. The Delaware defensive secondary is doing the job again, and he just skips around, and he wants to still throw the football. Now he says, whoa, look at all that green grass. I'm going for it. Second down and two. This is Palmer. He is going to have the first down, although he is hurtled back. Palmer did crack the forward wall and up for the first down at about the 31-and-a-half yard line. Greg Robertson stacked him up that time. That's the Delaware captain from Seaford, Delaware. The little Paul Palmer. Getting some instructions from the sideline. Uh, should have zigged when I zagged, Coach. Is that what you're telling me? Had a flag against uh, Delaware that time. And this will be a step-off and a major step-off against the Hens. I believe it was holding. Anthony Chambers. Our referee says personal foul. personal foul. Personal foul against Delaware. That must have come after the whistle too, Len, because they lined it off from where the ball had been spotted, not from the line of scrimmage. Back to the 16-yard line of Delaware. This is Delaware and Temple tied at 9-9, but Temple threatening. Edwards in motion to the far side. Harmon. Not a whole lot, but he picks his way to about the 13-yard line. Vaughn Dickinson, Joe Quigg in on the stop. Eric Leak is also there. And Jimmy Newfrock comes back into the defensive unit. He had been felled on that play by Jeff Hynoski. The Temple sideline. Greg Ponto is put to the far side. Edwards. Now in motion to the far side. Second down and six. Palmer. And they hit Palmer this time. Sean he Riley. holds on to the football. Took a good whack from Sean Riley. <laughs> and Eric Leakes is not getting up. Or getting up very slowly for the hens. He is shaken. And is going to have to come off. And Delaware will have to go to its depth. Joe McGrail. 
Number 94 now in with the defensive unit for the Hens. As you can see also, 84 Gary Cannon is in at a defensive end position. Third down and two, the ball at the Delaware eight-yard line. Palmer, he is slicing close to a first down. Robertson and Riley got him in between them that time. And we're going to have the change brought in for a measurement. Glenn Holmquist and Howard Gesner here at Delaware Stadium as SpectraVision brings you University of Delaware football. The next two weeks, our SpectraVision cameras will be on the road with the Hens, first in Harrisonburg, Virginia, against James Madison University next week, and then up to Rhode Island. And Temple is going to be short by just a couple of inches, as you can see. Referee Anthony Chambers signaling And the Owls here with the third quarter still showing 6.45 remaining to be played, going for it. This will probably just be your standard quarterback sneak. I don't think they want to risk anything happening on a handoff here. That's all it is. Reardon is stacked up, but remember he only had to get a couple of inches. He got stacked quickly as the blue mass rose up to meeting, but Temple has achieved the first down as they spot the football. They're going to bring in the chains, I believe. Well, let me take a look. I would say he's got it, but not by much. Not by much. The chains being brought in. First down, football. Brought to you by Structure Vision, WNS TV, Channel 2 in Wilmington. Store Cable TV in Dover, Channel 4, and our good friends at Simmons Cable in Harrington, and Channel 7 throughout the 1983 season. Temple achieving the first down, as we told you, by Reardon on the quarterback sneak. He didn't make it by much, but he didn't have to get very much. First and goal at the Delaware six-yard line. Palmer. He is tripped up, but still manages to dive forward. Just those fast feet. He got away from Greg Robertson, who got him low. Good balance. Good balance. Going. Able to keep on his feet. Palmer is just so quick into the line of scrimmage. And you've got to remember that they've been going up against the likes of uh, Pitt and Penn State, and he's been belted around a few times. Yes, he has. The ball at the three-yard line, just outside. Well, midway between the two and three. Second and goal. Palmer, oh, he's going to oh. walk in that time as they find a seam in the Delaware defense. And Paul Palmer, the freshman from Potomac, Maryland, puts Temple back out in front of the Blue Hens by a 15 to 9 count. Mike Berger, the center, opened that hole for Palmer that time. And let's see if Cooper will come on. He will. Jim Cooper told you earlier he's been in a little bit of a battle for the kicking specialist spot with Mike Abbott. The Cooper, the freshman on. Salt will hold it. He's another freshman. It's drilled. It looks perfect. It is perfect. And the clock here at Delaware Stadium shows five minutes and 41 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. And Temple has gone on top of the hens at 16 to 9. Well, I think Delaware has to come out on this possession, Len, and reestablish some of the confidence they had going for them toward the end of the second quarter. And even here, early in the third quarter, before they, they lost the ball on the fumble. Palmer they, filling that hole very quickly, and he got a great lead block from his fullback, Harold Harmon, from Frankfurt, Delaware. They have a uh, another Delawarean on the Temple roster, although he is not suited and does not travel with the varsity for road contests, Pete Johnson, who plays the quarterback Penn at uh, William Penn High Now, School. last year they moved him over. He played a lot of defense, and that's what Temple's doing with him. I think they've made him a defensive end. Uh, he was a starting quarterback in high school as a junior, but he got hurt early in the last season and was replaced, and the kid who replaced him, uh, he could never win his job back, and he was relegated to mop-up duty and, you know, games at the end of the game, and then uh, Bruce Reynolds had him playing some defense. Here is Cooper angled at a cross field a couple of times, but now it's more straight on. Higher in this corner. At the 10. 
And short of the 20 again, Temple's coverage on kickoffs is just great, Howard. Their special teamwork has been good. They've, they've kept Delaware, for the most part, inside the 20 on, on every kickoff. Remember, against Massachusetts, it was John Kaysan who broke one for 85 yards on a kickoff return. And although he has handled a couple of kickoffs, Delaware has not been able to break anything long. First and 10 from their own 19-yard line. Dan Reeder gets away from the first out, slips down here at the 24-yard line. Doesn't look like much, but it's five. Gain of five. Well, he got a couple of it just by falling forward after he got hit. Tim Sager out and Steve Pontiacus in with the play from the bench. Touchdown maker Paul Hammond splitting into the near sideline. That's higher as the wing back. Pontiacus is wide open. And he's got the reception on the first down. Here's the 35-yard line. Steve Pontiacus. Kevin Roth up to make the stop again for Temple. That's the second reception by Pontiacus. Takes a reader. Pontiacus finds the dead spot. And Webster delivers the football. First and 10 for Delaware at their own 35. Reader again, this time not quite five, but close to it. Jerry McDowell was the first out to get a hand on it. Ken Stubolo almost had him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Stubolo and McDowell are the defensive tackles in a four-man front that sometimes has looked like an eight-man front, as Bill Maley has told us a couple of times from well, the sideline. A lot of times they move the linebacks to spring the three linebackers up and the rover back can also come up. Second down, long six. Higher. And just a great defensive job by Kevin Ross. We have a flag down far across the field, but Kevin Ross doing the job against Higher. Boy, he's got some speed. He, he does. over there in a hurry. It's just everything going against the grain. And Higher is tracked people. down very nicely by Ross. He's got now, Temple offside. Now to... Well, they're going to discuss things with uh, Delaware, but I'm sure the Hens are going to take the five-yard step off because the play itself only worked for about three and a half. Plus, they get another down to work with. Bill Maley joining us on the sideline. Bill? It looks like both teams were pleased with what they did in the first half. They're coming out doing the same thing. Temple's shoving it up in the middle of the Delaware defense. Delaware's trying to mix it up a little, keep them off balance. If anything goes, it looks like Delaware's going to have to firm up the inside of that defensive line because Temple's executing better than Delaware this half. Second down and two at the 43-yard line for the Hens following the step-off against Temple. This is the reception and then thrown back. And the Delaware fans are not too pleased with the Temple tackle. Chris Heyer is the receiver. And that pass play only worked for one yard. Chris Heyer and Tim Hanley um, say hello to each other. The reason the uh, fans are booing is they think that Heyer had uh, more forward progress and then was tossed back. But the officials say no. And Delaware will face a third down. They'll need one. Here at the 44, Pontiacus now splitting into the near side. That's Darienzo to the far side. And Reader's got the football for the first down. Dan Reader gives Delaware a first down as the hens grind it out on the ground. Both teams ran uh, about the same in the first half of play. Temple had 66 yards rushing. Delaware 65. Temple actually had uh, more total yardage, about six yards. But it's been a hard-nosed defensive struggle for the most part. First and 10 at the 48. Pontiacus intercepted. Anthony Young has the interception for Temple. He fumbled. And now... He fumbles the football away, and we're going to have to wait and see. Did he step out of bounds or not? I think they said he fumbled it after the whistle. 
And for Young, that is his 11th career interception right off the hands of Pontiacus and delivered nicely. There it is. Let's see if we can see where he steps out of bounds. Uh, right there, it may have been that he yeah, stepped out of bounds. He cuts back, and the ball is taken away from him by Kaysaw. The hands recover, but Temple's got it. First and 10 at the 42. Here's Reardon throwing the football. Carter's got it. Russell Carter with the fine falling catch of the football at the 23 yard line. That was an excellent catch. Just superb by Carter. That interception, by the way, for Young is 11th career interception. And now Carter splits into the near side. First and 10 at the 23 of Delaware. This is Temple on top. It's 16 and nine, and they're looking for more. Palmer. Touchdown. Well, that time he got through the line and there was nobody sitting there uh, waiting to back up for Delaware. Palmer just a little bit too quick for Delaware's defensive front. And Temple, Watch here right it here. is. There he gets outside. Nobody blue, out there. One blue hand makes the shot at him, but Palmer, he's in for the score as Riley dives too late. And Temple trailing at halftime by 9-3 to three, has come on here to establish a 22, make that 23-9 to nine advantage over the University of Delaware Blue Hens with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter as the Temple Owl cheerleaders whoop it up on the sideline. And the, the Delaware fans appear to be stunned again. It is just a quick turnaround of events. Uh, Delaware gives up the interception, and then two plays later, Temple is on the scoreboard with six points. Uh, a long pass completion, and then Palmer around, around the left end for the six points, and the extra point attempt is good. And uh, this game, if Delaware does not control the ball a little bit more, you know, hold on to the ball and put something on the board, this game has the possibility of turning into a rout. Well, the Owls have been going at it in the big time. And they've shown their poise here. They certainly have. They came back out trailing by six points. And uh, like Bill commented a little bit earlier, they stayed with their game plan. They did the same things they were doing in the first half, except so far they've done them a little bit better. Cooper to kick off. Higher at the two. And again, great downfield coverage on the kickoff by the Owls. As Meyer is knocked off his feet. Is that Kevin Ross? And coming up for the Owls. Looks Kevin like Ross, it. Ross Meyer, he's a... Uh, a little bit is. woozy. Kevin Ross got up a little bit slowly also. Those two colliding. Temple, two plays on the touchdown drive. 42 yards. It took only 20 seconds off the clock. 23-yard touchdown run by Palmer. And well, now looks like we have a penalty against Delaware. Step off against the Blue Hens. Personal foul against Delaware. That's the second here in the second half against the Hens. Now it's half the distance to the goal, so it's going to put the ball back on the nine-yard line, and that's a tough place to operate from, especially when the team you're operating against has got a little bit of momentum on their side. Well, I'd say they have a little bit more than a little bit momentum. They have a great deal of momentum going for them. And this could be a very... Key series for the Hens. Temple has not quite blown it open. Kaysan slithering here to about the 12-yard line, but the Hens needing to control the football. Now well, Kaysan got off to a bad start on that play. He ran into his own left tackle, Randy Smith. Picked up uh, just three on the play. Remember, that was a first down and 20 situations so it's now second down and a little bit more than 16 
Webster, he drills it, and Gary Enzo has it out here at the 25-yard line. He'll be short of a first down. Kevin Ross is the defender for Temple. It's close enough to a first down, though, to where Delaware has several options on what they can do now. Uh, they're not faced with uh, with uh, seven, eight, nine, or ten yards where where they almost have to pass for it. They've only got a couple of yards to go for the first down, and they can go for a quick pass or they can go for the run. Hammond putting into the near sideline. That tire in motion. Reader, he'll have the first down out here at the 30-yard line. Anthony Young collaborating with Todd Bowles to knock Dan Reader off his feet. But that's Delaware achieving a first down, something they had to do. That's a big first down for Delaware. It really is. It gives them another series of downs and uh, gets them out of the shadow of their own goal line. Hammond to the near side. Paniakis has set up tight on the right side. And Webster under pressure. He's going to throw it to a lineman. And believe. let's wait and see. We had Dan Reeder in the area, luckily yeah. for Delaware. <laughs> That pass was really delivered to Doug Martin, and unfortunately, Doug wears 6-0, and that's no-no. <laughs> Let's watch it. Webster getting away with this one as the pressure was coming coming on him. And then Doug Martin said, no, no, I don't want to touch that thing. No. <laughs> that, Second down. That could have been a costly play. Webster under pressure that time. The heat was being applied on him by Bob Shires. The defensive tackle. There he is. For Hammond. Anthony Young knocks the football loose. Delaware is diving for it, but Temple's going to come up with the football. Oh, boy. Coming up with the football and dancing off is Dan Abdu. Abdu Hammond having the football stripped away from him by Anthony Young. We'll get oh, another look at it. open that time. Webster hitting in stride, Hammond, and then Young came over, and he went for the football, knocking it free, and then the foot race was on, and Abdu won the foot race for Temple. That was a great job of coverage by Young again after the catch was made. He got over there in a hurry. First down, Temple at their own 16-yard line. Here is just a belly play into the center of the line. And let's see if Harmon is in there. Now well, we've got a new running back for the Owls. Number 44 is Shelly Poole. Harmon now out. Poole is now in. The end of the third quarter is Kip Scheinefeld. Practices his putting. The Niblick and its pub, serving you for over 14 years. One of the first with an abundant salad bar where you create your own delicacy. Serving lunch from 11 to 2, Monday through Friday. Dinner 5 to 9, Sunday through Thursday. And 5 to 10 on Friday and Saturday. Enjoy the weekly special, 6 dollars to 10 dollars So come to the Niblick and its pub. Enjoy fine food, beautiful decor, and excellent service. The steak-eating champ of the East ate a 54-ounce steak on May 9th, 1982. All challengers welcome to beat the record. Private banquets for up to 40 people. Special rates reserved now only at the Niblick and its pub. Come see the Italian Stallions at Buck Cycle Shop, the high-performance 900 SEI Benelli. Perfectly balanced, six-cylinder machine. The Laverta 1000 RGS has changed the form of sporting bikes. The refined elegance of the Italian style. Lightweight frame and 1000 cc of power. We're authorized dealers of Triumph, Full Taco, Moto Guzzi, Laverta, and Montiza. Also, we're authorized dealers of the Weed Hopper, the ultralight airplane. See them all at Buck Cycle Shop, 2701 Northeast Boulevard in Wilmington. Call 764-2876. WNSTV is proud to present two programs designed to help the handyman do a better job. With the help of the Shopsmith Work Center, you can easily and quickly learn to build like the pros. The Shopsmith makes it safe and simple. Find out just how easy it can be. Tune into Hands On, Wednesday at 8 p.m. and The Joy of Woodworking, Thursday at 8.30 p.m. exclusively on Cable Channel 2. The finest in oriental cuisine is what you can always expect at those Wing Wah restaurant locations, 3901 Concord Pike and the Chestnut Hill Plaza, Newark. 
A filling Cantonese dishes such as Seven Stars Around the Moon or Sweet and Sour Pork are a specialty at Wing Wah where they feature combination family dinners and exotic cocktails. The entire menu is available for takeout service and they have complete facilities for parties, receptions, or group luncheons. Experience the Orient at the House of Wing Wah Oriental Restaurant. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication and attention to detail, a belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try us. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. quarter here at Delaware and Temple. It'll be Temple's football and Temple's lead at 23 to 9 on the bank of Delaware scoreboard. Second down and eight for the Owls at their own 18-yard line. Reardon has it almost picked off. And Vaughn Dickinson, he got a hand on it and is he ever upset with himself? The defensive end for the hands almost making an interception that could have quickly turned it around for Delaware. Here it is again. That's a good thing he was there, too, because Harmon had some room if he'd have caught that ball. And Dickinson spotted the screen, though. Yep. And stayed in the area. Almost came up with the interception. Third down and eight. Reardon delivers it high over the intended receiver's head, trying to hit Greg Franco here on the near sideline. And Tepo will send in their excellent punter. Kip Schenefeld, he only punted one time in the first half. Yeah. I got to say, only, that's the only statistics, time are, statistics are very funny. Now, he's going to get hurt by that punt, but he did his job. It was only a 29-yard punt, and he came into the game with a 44.8-yard average. But from where he was punting the ball, that was the best he could do. And he pinned Delaware at the six-yard line. The hens are coming, and they almost get there. Campbell at the 45. And downfield quickly again. Temple's seven white shirts. Specialty teams just do a great, great job. Bruce Arian, he plays for a master down at Alabama. First right, Paul Bear Bryant. And all Alabama always, always does well with their specialty teams. First and ten for Delaware. Just up underway here in the fourth quarter. Here is the pass delivered too low for Kaysan. Probably the best place to throw the football. Kilkenny, number 57, Tom Kilkenny had Kaysan covered well for Temple. Bill Bailey on the sideline. Well, look for Delaware to keep going to the short passes. With that long pass to Hammond, it was fumbled. That's going to open up the short passes again, because after getting beat deep, I know being a defensive back, after getting beat deep, you're more leery of staying deep again. It's going to open up the inside. Thank you, Bill. Good point. Second down and 10 for Delaware at the 45-yard line. Here is a flag down as Kaysan has the football and crosses into Temple territory. All right, let us wait and check out the flag. We had uh, a number of flags in the first half of this game as the entire first quarter seemed to be rather uh, against hesitating. Delaware. It is against Delaware. Well, that's a shame. They got a lot of yardage on that play, and now they're going to lose it. They had picked up eight, but the illegal procedure against the Hens. Something that shouldn't happen in the seventh ball game of the season, but it does. And it hurts the Hens. Back to their own 40-yard line. That's the eighth flag of the afternoon against Delaware. <laughs> and two turnovers here in the second half haven't helped either. Second down and 15. Kaysan needing a block, but not getting the kind of block that he really needed by higher here into the near sideline. And 
John Kason ridden out of bounds. Ray Barnard put a pretty good stick on him. Hannon will go off. And Darienzo will replace him at the spread receiver spot, and he'll spread to the far side. On third down and 10, Kason getting back what Delaware had been chalked off against via the penalty. Kason and Jerry Enzo almost make the reception from cutting in front of Kason. That might it's, be a... It's a good thing he was there because I think that ball would have been intercepted. Yeah, the Owls were going for it too. Purvis Harder, number 20. A Purvis Turner, he yeah, was going for it. Let's take a look and see if we can pick it up. Kason right. had the defense beaten, and then here comes Jerry Enzo, and he takes the interception away. That ball would have been intercepted. I think... Uh, Gary Enzo was playing more of a defensive role that time. Well, he may not have known he was playing a defensive <laughs> role, but it turned out to be that way. Here's Al oh, Anderson has it go off the side of his foot. And Temple is going to get it in relatively good field position. Anderson could have pinned him deep. Remember, he is kicking with the wind at his back, but he shanked it. And the hands go off, and their defense comes on, and Temple will have it at their own 36-yard line. And time is starting to become a factor. Under 14 minutes remaining to be played, this is Temple trying to snap a five-game losing streak against the likes of Pittsburgh, Penn State, Boston College, Cincinnati, East Carolina. Carter in motion to the far side. Palmer. Oh, Not Palmer this time. time. There was no seam whatsoever as Sean, Sean Riley. Riley and then Pawlowski. They just closed any gap that may have. Oh, he had this one coming. <laughs> that hole is filled very quickly. Greg Robertson also assisting on the stop. One yard for Palmer's effort. Second and nine. And he overthrows his intended receiver, Franco, here on the near side. Newfrock covering for Delaware. Franco to the sideline now, and Willie Marshall replaces him. That's a, one of the two wide outs that... He might have thrown that one on purpose, too. It's pretty good coverage by Delaware that time. Marshall and Carter this time. Senior quarterback, Tim Reardon. Third down and nine. And he just ended up throwing it away. There is nobody whatsoever wearing red and white within 20 yards of where he threw that football. Well, there's one that Timmy Reardon got away with. I sure mean, there, was, there wasn't anybody wearing cherry and white within 20 yards of where that ball was thrown. Watch Ed, it. Ed Maley on the sideline pleading the Delaware case also. He just threw it away. That's all he did. Joe Quigg was the closest to it. And he plays for Delaware. And he wasn't really that close. Jenna Phelps. He line drives it. Could set up a return for Campbell. But again, that great downfield oh. coverage by the Owls. Three, and three, Campbell four, is five, rough. Six of them. Trapped almost immediately here at the 28-yard line. There were a lot of outs there, but the first one was John Smith, reserve defensive back. And Delaware's offense will come on as Campbell trots to the sideline. He thought maybe he had a shot on that one, but Temple down that was, quickly. That was good coverage for Temple when you consider the kick. That was a line drive kick, and they didn't have a lot of time to get down there. But they now, were all there. Now the hens are going to have Kason set up as a wide out to the far side. Flagel is in the backfield. Reeder is taking the handoff and gets about a four yard pickup. Stop made by Bob Balkunis. He's the left inside linebacker from Taylor, Pennsylvania for the Temple Owls who take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Herschel who? And if they think that's fun, then next the week after that, they can go out and play the Mountaineers in West Virginia. Second down, and here's a flag down as Delaware's offense 
has the ball pitched to Slagle from Webster, but again, a flag is dropped. That's going to be number nine if it's against the hen. It's probably a procedure penalty, judging from where the, where the flag came down. Now, this one's going to go against, against Temple. Temple. Offside. Evidently, somebody lining up in the neutral zone. Temple offside. Now, the play itself with the pitch off to Slagle didn't go for very much, so you can rest assured that Temple is going to step it off five yards for their own goal line. Putting the football down at the 37-yard line. And now B.J. or Delaware, they have a, they have a play, they have a, a down to play with here. With second down and short yardage. I mean, they, they can almost always get the two yards that they need on the third down. This, this is the play a lot of times where you'll see teams go for six. Darienzo far side, Ammon to the near side. Delaware is going to play it safe. They're going to pick up the first down as they've got Kaysan fighting for yardage here at the 44-yard line. Nice bit of gutsy running by John Kaysan running right into the teeth of that Temple defense, and it's a tough one. Nobody, with the maybe the exception of Pittsburgh, has really rolled over the Owls. Pittsburgh shut them out 35 to nothing, but they've been in every other contest. Now Delaware's got four more plays to work with. First and ten for their own 44. Hammond unable to hold on to the football as he was being chased by Purvis Herter. And yeah. Hammond will track back to the huddle now. From unable to hold on to that throw by Webster. And we'll take a look on the instant replay. From where we were sitting, we couldn't see what the problem was. Oh, right in his, right in his hands. Just a little bit too long, unable to bring it in. He's the touchdown maker for the Hens. 11-yard reception early. Pass thrown by B.J. Webster under fierce pressure. Here is the counter crisscross, and it works as Slago almost has that ball torn loose from him. Going for the football for the Owls was number 13, Ray Barnard. And he almost got it away from Slagle, but Slagle does manage to pick up major yardage. Picks up seven. Third down and three upcoming in Temple territory at the 49. Let home quest. Virginia will be beckoning Delaware next week. Reader doesn't get the block that he needed from Kaysan. The cornerback just came up, and as Kaysan tried to throw the block. He got the first down, though. He did get the first down, but he could have gotten a lot more had Kaysan been able to take out the corner. Watch it on the replay. The pitch to Reader, and then Kaysan wants to throw a block, but Purvis Herter says, no way. Oh. He just stuffed everything back. He did slow him up just enough, though, I think, to allow for the first down. He got in his way. First and 10 for Delaware at the 45-yard line of Temple, but the Hens need to strike quickly here. Under 10 and a half minutes remaining. Webster. Hammond. No. And the official rules. Everything is okay, but there was some contact, Howard, <laughs> at about the 17, 18-yard line. I'm guilty. I, I did it. I called it before it happened. Well, you and about 15 <laughs> other thousand. Yeah, let's take another look. Well, we're not going to see it, I don't think. There it is. Now, right before Hammond came into the picture, there was a little bit of contact, but the officials rule no harm. Second down and 10 at the 45-yard line. Kaysan with the counter crisscross, and he has got a first down at the 33-yard line. Don Kaysan running with as much authority, Howard, as I've seen him run with in a couple of years. Don Kaysan is playing like a man possessed. Kaysan, of course, started his collegiate career at Villanova. When they dropped football, he came to Delaware. First down at the 32-yard line of Temple for Delaware. But Temple leads it at 23 to 9. Webster, Paniakis, and he has stood up right at the line of scrimmage. 
and knocked off his feet. First on the coverage was Paul Dara with help. But Dara, the linebacker on the left side, and the outside linebacker at that, makes the hit against Pontiacus. Matt McHugh, also the, the right tackle, was in on that. Ron James has come into the Delaware offensive set, and he is now in motion. James. Ron James. What a nice, nice side step he made there. He, he was almost caught about 10 yards back further. And I'll tell you, that play got off shaky because James did not have good control of the ball when he first got it. Here's another we'll look at it. it again. They want to get James in there to hey. utilize his speed to the outside. He almost bobbles Watch the pitch out. Move. Oh, what a great move. And he does step out of bounds here at the 16-yard line. First and 10 at the Temple 16. Reader, not a whole lot as he goes crashing down in the arms of Henderson, Hirschman, Todd Hirschman, number seven, wrapping him up at the 14. Just a two-yard pickup. The inside of that Temple defensive line is not giving up a lot. Not a whole the, lot at all. On the straight plays. Now, they've been, they've been fooled a couple of times on the counter criss, crisscross for good yardage. Pontiacus puts to the far side, Hammond to the near side. Lego now in motion. Kaysan is back in. Kaysan with the handoff, and he is fighting for yardage, but not a whole lot. Again, Hirschman is there. This time, Bob Falcon is also there, the inside linebacker on the left side. Third and five upcoming for Delaware at the Temple 11 yard line. And Sager brings the play in from the bench as Pontiacus goes off. D.J. Webster apparently doesn't, doesn't agree with the play that was sent in. And Delaware with Webster going to the sideline. The Hens have asked for a timeout. That's their Super E Plus, a new symbol for excellence in energy efficient homes. For years, home buyers have needed a program that certifies energy saving construction. So Delmarva Power, with the help of builders and architects, has developed Super E Plus. The result? Year-round living comfort, high resale value, and money-saving efficiency. To find out more, contact your Delmarva Power District office and discover the benefits of Super E+. Plus. The home field has not proven to be much of an advantage for the Hens this year. They are have two wins here at home, and they have dropped three contests. They will be on the road the next two weeks. Games Madison down in Virginia, and then Rhode Island up in Kingston. Third down and five at the Temple 11 yard line. The Owls look to be coming. They are all alone. Danny Reader. B.J. Webster being the pressure for the second time. Gets the football to Dan Reader. And I'll tell you, maybe that's the play that B.J. suggested on the sideline. Either that or it was the one Tubby called and convinced B.J. was right. <laughs> Paul Chakota made that play happen. Uh, B.J. Webster was just about to be sacked. And Chakota picked the man up. Lane will hold. Gasson kicks it. Looks good. It is good. There is a timeout here. At Delaware Stadium, the Blue Hands have closed the gap That's to maybe. 23 to 16. And here's another look. Here's Dan Let's Reeder. See, see that block again. Here it comes. There it is, right there. Look at just takes out the owl who is putting the heat on Webster, and he finds Reeder. Bowles, the rover back, almost getting to Webster, but then Chakotis did his job. And Webster completed his job hitting Reeder out of the backfield. Reader just uh, straight up the middle, and they didn't pay much attention to him. And it's now a 23 to 16 count. And 30 seconds ago, time was a big factor. Now there's a lot of time. Well, I'll tell you, Paul uh, Howard uh, 
In all honesty, Delaware is uh, three and three. Temple's one and five. We've seen a good football game, but no matter what the outcome of this contest, I think uh, the Delaware fans have got to go away with the feeling that this is a very resilient young group of football it players sure that Tubby Raymond has. They, they came here to prove something today, and, and like he said, uh, uh, win or lose, uh, up to this point so far, I think they've proven it. Uh, unofficially, 71-yard drive, 12 plays, took just under five minutes for Delaware. The touchdown pass, 11 yards, Reeder. And here is Purvis Herter. Herter out over the 30-yard line. The ball may have uh, just momentarily come free as the blue end dive for it. 23-16, Bill Bailey on the sideline, checking in with us now. That touchdown pass by Webster was an excellent play by him. What he would like to do on that is roll out and use a lot of the field, but he was choked off by one of the linebackers, had to find a receiver quick and did it. But that's all said and done now. It's up to the Delaware defense to hold him so we can get the ball back in good territory. That it is. First and 10 for Temple at the 31-yard line. Now it's Palmer. <laughs> and this little scat back from Potomac, Maryland. He quickly gets Temple seven yards, just like that. Give him just a little bit of daylight, and he'll go quickly. Well, the, before the game started, I said the key might have been the punter. But uh, <laughs> obviously, I wasn't aware of of this young man's ability. And not too many people have been able to run straight at the blue end defense, Howard. Uh, he's, maybe it's because he's so small, I don't know. Second down and three at the 38. Carter in motion to the near side. Reardon, Carter cannot dive and bring it in. Up here at the 35 yard line. A Little bit overthrown, he was certainly open. Reardon having the time to throw. Reardon stats uh, in the first half. He only put the ball up six times, hit on five of them for 95 yards. He was sacked a couple of times. We really expected uh, to see more aerial work by uh, Reardon. I think so, yes. Third down, big third down for the Hens. Third and three at the 38-yard line. Palmer, he's not going to get the oh, first down. The blue hand defense stacks everything up right at the 40-yard line, and Temple will be short. Vaughn Dickinson is on the bottom of the stack. He came close. He made a good effort. And we should hear a nice round of applause for the Delaware defense as they come off the field. And a well-reserved, well-deserved round of applause. Fourth down, one. Jennifer on the kick. And Delaware has got 10 men at the line of scrimmage. The Blues coming, and they knock oh, Jennifer geez. down. Campbell's got the football at the 25-yard line, but Jennifer got knocked down as Delaware went for the block of the punch. Well, that's something that you chance when you go for the kicker. Once you've committed yourself, here it is. I think it was Mike Harris. I may be wrong. I probably shouldn't say that. It was. Harris got the Shennefeld, and he got him halfway decent, to be honest about it. Yes, he did. And this one will be not five for running into the kicker, but the big one, 15 yards. And that gives Temple a first down at the Delaware 45-yard line, roughing the kicker, the official call, and the Owls will have new life. And Delaware now looks to need a turnover. 23-16, Temple leading with six and a half minutes to play. Len Holmquist and Howard Gesner at Delaware Stadium next week on the road at Virginia and James Madison University. Palmer, and again, oh. he just slices for five, six, seven. Greg Robertson finally got him. This little freshman is just finding seams everywhere in the Delaware offensive front. He's getting the good upfield blocking. The upfront blocking provided by Jim Presto, Don Reenstra, Mike Berger, the center. He's an outstanding center. Six on the pickup. Second down and four at the Delaware 39. Palmer again at a first down. <laughs> Delaware had to have Joe McRail 
track him down for the stop. First down and 10 for the Owls. Trying to salt this one away with this drive. And if not six, at least get it closer for a field goal attempt by Jim Cooper. Cooper is hit from 42 yards, but remember on that occasion, he had the wind at his back. Harmon, he runs into a stone wall. Vaughn Dickinson got there in a hurry, and then he had help. Well, I tell you, we found out the reason that Harmon hasn't been carrying the ball so much, and it's not so much Roderick Moore, who uh, has been alternating with him as a starter. It's more Palmer. Palmer had only uh, 35 yards rushing in the first half. We now have him unofficially with 115 yards. Second down and 10 at the 32. Harmon picking up nothing on that first down play. Palmer. And they are going for the football of the hands, but he holds on to it and just punches forward for a couple of yards. I think an important fact to remember here right now, Len, is that the Temple field goal kicker was warming up in the first half, and he was kicking them from the 50-yard line. And that's 60 yards. Now, he had the wind at his back, but... Uh, the wind well, is not blowing as briskly now as it was at the beginning of the game. No, I was just ready to point that out. It is not blowing that briskly. Third down and eight. Delaware needing to stop the Owls right here. Palmer getting him low and tripping him up is Captain Greg Robertson. He got out of Robertson's hold or hand, whatever, and then falls forward. He will be short of a first down. As the football is placed down at the 26-yard line, fourth down, and Cooper is going to come on and try the field goal. Big decision here for the Temple coaching staff. Uh, there, there might be a little temptation to try and go for the first down. They're pretty deep in, in Delaware territory, and, uh, of course, the three points also look good. Especially if they could hit it, and with the clock running with under 3.45 to play. 42-yard attempt, crosswind. Here's the kick by Cooper. It's not going to make it. I think it was deflected. It is not going to be making it. And Jim Polosky is going to run it out from beyond the end zone. <laughs> Common sense took over. <laughs> I think if we, get, if we get a chance to see this again, I think you might see a Delaware player get a hand on that ball. But Cooper comes up short, kicking into the breeze. And Delaware will take over at the spot of where the ball was snapped, remember, it was outside of the 20-yard line. So the hands will take over the 26-yard line. Bill Bailey's on the sidelines, and he's got a bird's-eye view of the hand offense right now. Bill? There's three minutes left now, but they've still got plenty of time to mount a drive. So just look for the short passes. I don't think they need the bomb right yet. On first down, they're going to feed the football to Dan Reeder, and he's not going to find any running room whatsoever as the Owls choke him off very nicely. Ken Stubolo. He's the senior left tackle from Huntington, New York. He makes the stop. Just a yard pickup, second down and nine. At the 27-yard line. Darienzo into the near side. That's Kason setting up as the wing back. Now he comes back in motion. Webster throwing it up and throws it out of bounds. He wanted to hit higher. Here at about the 30-yard line, and Darienzo is another five yards downfield. But he had pressure put on him, and Darienzo is going to trot off. And Hammond will replace him as the Temple sideline giving directions to their defensive unit. Third down and nine. Delaware needing to convert here with the clock showing under four minutes, then stopped on the incompletion. Here's the counter crisscross and just stacking everything up real nicely. Delaware unable. And the fans don't like the call. And I'm a little surprised at the call myself. The blocking, uh, the blocking got got jumbled up in the middle there. And actually Tim Sager was in the way. And there were a couple of other blue hens in the way, and Anderson will punt it with a breeze at his back. Young is deep for Temple. Signaling for a fair catch here at the 35-yard line. And Temple will take over and now just look to run out the clock and run out the 
Opportunity on Delaware to upend the Owls. I'll be surprised if they put the ball in the air right here. I, I would look for three running plays to run as much time off the clock as possible. Then call on Chenefelt to do his thing and put the Hens deep in their own territory with uh, maybe a minute, even under a minute, left to play in the game. Well, Reardon has gone sour here in the fourth quarter. He's missed on his last five attempts. He's going to pitch the ball to Palmer. Palmer skitters away from a couple of blue hens and manages to pick up Yardy. He's only a freshman. And I'll tell you, if he gets a little bit of size on him, but I gather uh, at his age, he's not going to get a whole lot more size, but he's a good one. He's quick. He had only picked up 225 yards in the previous six games, and we have him unofficially with over 115 yards. Second down and nine at the 37. The clock under two minutes now. Palmer. Nothing. And the hands utilize a timeout. The Tyrolia Total Diagonal System. Today's skier demands the most advanced high-tech equipment. Tyrolia's new diagonal reflex toe and the exclusive diagonal release heel work perfectly together as a total system. The Tyrolia Total Diagonal System lets you set your own limits. Anything else is less. Step up to the performance of the best-selling binding in the world, the Tyrolia Total Diagonal System. open roads with true performance. Two-wheeled cycle combines a complete line of quality bicycles, accessories for every cyclist's need, and service to optimize performance of your present bicycle. Come in and talk with experienced professionals. See what's new on two wheels and ride into the experience. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication and attention to detail, a belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try us. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable Halloween from WNSTV, Wilmington, Newcastle. That five-game losing streak right here. Third down. Delaware's coming. Pass is thrown. Marshall's making a diving try for it. The official says no. Marshall is probably uh, not too happy with the call. Flag was dropped immediately as the snap. It was a flag on the flag. It was only a mild protest on the part of Marshall, though. He... This one's going to go against Temple, and I believe that, uh, well, Delaware will decline it. They want the football, of course. Marshall diving for it, and very hard to tell. Looks like it may have hit the ground as he was falling. Now, like I say, he didn't protest very loudly. He put up a mild protest. But... And Temple will be forced to punch. The clock stopping on the incompletion with a minute, 36 seconds. Delaware will get the football one time out, and they're going to try to get to Chenefeld again. They roughed him up last time. They don't get there again, and again the flag goes down. Campbell, Delaware gambling twice, and twice it has cost the Blue Hens. This time it's Jimmy Newfrock who runs into Chenefeld, and Temple will get the football, and they'll be able to run out the clock. It's just that simple. And it was only a 32-yard punt. Yeah, we'll take another look at it. Here he comes. Well, see, he committed. He left his feet and committed himself. And Chenefeld in the air. Newfrock gets him right on the foot just as the ball is released. And that was called roughing. Now, this was, now that was called running, running into the into kicker. It, right. 
Well, Delaware gets a break here because that's only a five-yard step off. And remember, Temple needed more than five yards, and they're going to punt it over again. And I don't think the Hens are going to come this time, although they've got ten men stacked at the line of scrimmage. They didn't give them five yards either. They only gave them four. This time, everything goes okay. Campbell comes on the football at the 30-yard line. He is down at the 34-yard line. And Delaware, in reality, Howard, getting a break. Yes, that could have did. easily had been yes, called did. roughing the kicker. I've seen it called roughing the kicker for a lot less than that. That was only a 30-yard punt also. Unless my arithmetic is off. 22. Delaware needing to go. 66 yards with 120 left on the clock. First and 10 from their 34. Webster. He delivers the football. Oh. Almost intercepted. Tom Kilkenny getting a hand on it for Temple. Almost with the interception. Darienzo, the intended receiver. That's a good thing Kilkenny got his hand on it because Darienzo would have would have had the would have had the ball. Here it is. Still. Kilkenny reaching back and Darienzo was open. Yes, he was. As Herder was coming up quickly on Darienzo. Second down and ten. At Delaware's 34-yard line. Webster, too high, intercepted. Herter has got the interception, I believe. And now a flag goes down. Oh, it was either too high or too low. He also had Case on a little bit further. Herter with the interception. And then a flag dropped as Herter may have been followed on a little bit too late by one of the blue hands, and he'll come off, and that will kill Delaware's last shot, barring a turnover here, to defeat the Owls, and Delaware is going to drop below 500 after seven games into the season for the first time in a long time, Howard. That's a personal foul against Delaware. Ball after stepped off to the 34-yard line. Clock showing 107. And Reardon is not about to get fancy here. He's going to give it to the sure-handed Palmer, and Palmer just dives into the stack. And right now, individual statistics, as far as Paul Palmer is concerned, don't mean a thing because the Owls are in the process of snapping what has to be a frustrating losing streak of five in a row. Frustrating, Howard, in the sense that they've been in most of those games. That's right. Uh, I was talking with the assistant SID from Temple before the game, John Everett, and he said uh, they, they really think they should have won at least two of those games that they lost. And he's talking about Penn State as one of them. Uh, of course, Penn State had to score late in the game to beat Temple. And now here's a strange call. Delaware had let the clock run and run and run and now finally call a timeout with only 41 seconds left to play. If they wanted to call a timeout, the Hens should have very quickly asked for a timeout after Palmer was stopped, but they let the clock run, utilized their last timeout. So Delaware will take the action on the road. And maybe that's uh, a good spot to be at three and four in the campaign. Before the game, the consensus seemed to be that for Delaware to win this afternoon, they would have to play perfect or just perfect football. And I'll tell you, they came close. They've only turned the ball over three times this afternoon, uh, once on an interception and, and two fumbles. But apparently that was just three turnovers too many because Temple took advantage of them. Reardon. We'll just follow the football back here at the 35-yard line. The clock will not be able to be stopped anymore by the Blue Hens, and Temple is stopping their five-game losing streak. They're going to send the Hens down to their second straight defeat and their fourth on the year. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication, and attention to detail. A belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try us. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. citizens. 
Station, the watchword. Available locally at the Big Elk Mall, Elkton, Maryland. When my small business grew, I talked to the people at Entree Computer Center. At Entree, they took the time to find out what my business needs were. They introduced me to affordable, reliable computer systems, and they even offered classes, installation, and continued service after the sale. Because the Entree franchise of Wilmington is privately owned, I received professional, personalized service from people who understood my business needs. Delaware dropping below 500. And it, as I said before, it's been a long time since the hens have been below 500 at this stage in the season. But James Madison University is to be reckoned with by Delaware. One week from now, on the road down in scenic Harrisonburg, Virginia. Temple just standing back in the huddle. We have reached, well, we haven't reached it quite because the clock has stopped as Temple has run out of time and to step off for a delayed game penalty. While well, we have the opportunity here, we'd like to uh, thank uh, David Hyde for providing us with our statistics. Temple happy to win, I'm sure. And while Delaware goes to Virginia to play James Madison University, Temple is going to be going a little further south, a little to the east, to Athens, Georgia. And the Georgia Bulldogs await Temple's Owls. And then after that, if everything doesn't go right or wrong for Temple, all they have to do is play West Virginia. Well, the only thing they don't have to worry about next week is Herschel Walker. He won't be there. <laughs> but the final count here at Delaware Stadium, as you can see on the bank of Delaware scoreboard, Temple.